All right. All right. We are live. We are live. It's your boy, Conscious Coon Killer, killing the coon within me and the coon within you. And got a guest on here, Team Rob, uh, one of the one of the first people that I started watching years back in the, uh, I guess, so-called conscious community here on YouTube. Um, He's going to do this kind of, I guess, casual interview style thing. We're going to kind of chop it up. Got about nine, ten questions for him, and we're just going to uh, get it in. So uh, when you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and start off the first question, Rob. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. Uh, question number one, uh, what made you want to start making YouTube videos? And more importantly, what keeps you going despite all the trolls and everything like that? Oh, man. Um, well, actually, I started doing YouTube videos back in 2008 and it wasn't a you know, it wasn't anything as far as black consciousness that I was doing. I just did videos randomly talking about different subjects and um, anybody that's you know been with me for that long. They have been able to see me evolve, see me change um, over the years. Um, and then I could because I felt it was important for every black person. I know we have this. Uh, motto they say something about lifting every voice and I think that's very important for us as a community considering the media is white owned white dominated and they put out any portrayal of us that they want to so it's very important for us to lift every voice in whatever way we can on social media and I decided that was a something very important for me to do as well so I got on the path that I was on to try to help educate black people and you know kill that coon and it's the same same the same thing as your as your username is to kill that coon inside of us and decolonize our mind and really what keeps me going and and this is the, probably the same for anybody that does these videos is the glimpses of positivity that you get from your own people the glimpses of positivity that you'll get from um whether it's you know your subscribers whether it's random people that may see your videos just those glimpses of positivity or people saying that you impacted their life or you may have put them on a path of consciousness just to open that door for them, just to uh, get them to walk through it. Um, that's what keeps me going is those small glimpses of positivity, despite the amount of trolls, despite the amount of uh, coons that will be on here and be against you constantly. It can be demoralizing. Um, so for anybody that's doing this, just, you know, I would suggest you keep your head up. Hold your head up and just know that even if it's just one or two people that's actually listening to you, you still are making some type of impact um, regardless and just focus on the positivity. Hey, absolutely. That's that's some uh, me and some of my friends used to talk about uh, before I really even got into uh, this side of you two years ago. I just always think I'm like, man, imagine if back in the civil rights movement, they had social media. Imagine if Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. You know, all, all of them, you know, the men and women back in the 50s and 60s, if they just had some just something as simple as this. Right. Like imagine Martin and and Malcolm could sit down just like, not not saying that we, you know, but I'm just saying, like, imagine if people like that, just something, something this simple, you know, they could be one person could be in Alabama and one can be, you know, somewhere in uh, uh, Illinois, somewhere just right. chopping up like this, you know, right. and everybody can just see they ain't got to go through, you know, no type of you know, uh, uh, loops and all this type of stuff like they did back in the day. It's just like, right. man, you know, powerful. But what have they? Yeah. Got, the government would have found a way to fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. But I do think that would have been a powerful tool for us to have back then. Now that we do have it, I think that it's up to us to kind of, you know, carry that and understand. Just like you said, it, it's it's a lot easier now to connect with people. And that's one of the greatest things about social media. We and that's why we need to be. Uh, actively using any platform that we can to communicate and get messages out to our people most definitely absolutely 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 man that's um yeah i, I didn't know you was, started making videos back in 08 i think i think i uh found out about you i want to say around 2012 2013 something like that yeah, yeah i was around there. There. they weren't on the path but they i was just doing random stuff about life and mm. stuff like that hey when i when i, when I First started making YouTube videos about video games and stuff. So I mean, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, you start somewhere. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the uh next one, which is uh what is the most uh important part of our community and race, or whatever whatever you want to call it, um, as far as what needs to be protected for our community? Like what what is the number one aspect that needs to be protected? Um if you ask me, the number one asset needs to be protected. Do you mean as far as structure? Because if I was going to say our minds, but do you mean as far as 
uh, infrastructure that needs to be protected? Or are you talking about just anything in general that needs to be protected? Um, I guess anything in general, but more so the the structure as far as our community as a whole, not so much uh, uh, as our minds individually. Right. You know, I do agree right. with that, but right. the, yeah, the, the structure. Well, honestly, yeah. our would be our actual well, actually the community itself. Um, one of the problems that we have uh, as black people, and even though we do say the black community, that's more of an idealistic um, title for what black neighborhoods or black areas actually are. It's very rare to find an actual community. So I think the number one thing that we need to um, protect is that community mindset or just having that uh, having that drive to even want to be a community because we say black community, but in my in my observation, we aren't really a community yet. I think that that's a goal that we have that we should be pushing forward to. Um, I think that um, we could keep our areas a lot better. I've actually gotten flack for saying this, even in our perspective areas, our um, the ghettos, the hoods or whatever it is, I think we could do a much better job of taking care of those areas and not uh, trashing them like we do. We could do a much better job there of just having more, and that would come with having pride in where you are and pride in uh, where you live. You know, even something as simple as throwing trash on the ground, uh, spraying graffiti everywhere and things like that. We destroy things. I think we could do a much better job of, um, you know, just uplifting and keeping our areas preserved. But that comes down to having the actual mentality to think that that's even an important thing for us to do. Um, and that will help us to me anyway. It will help create more pride within us about the areas in which we uh, occupy, whether uh, we got there via we know how we got to the ghettos we know the uh red line and we understand how that works but we could also do a much better job of keeping just the just the very basic the structures of our communities keeping them up and keeping them um you know just upstanding areas um to where we, we can have something to be proud of hey yeah absolutely you know that to me that's why i think the black panthers probably had the best overall ideology at least here in america not that they was perfect because no human being right, or human right. being we're all flawed but i think they were on the right path Most you definitely. know just kind of alluding to what you were saying about you know keeping the communities clean whether it's the actual environment the people all this type of stuff you know as far as what my knowledge is to Bla the black panther that's basically what their premise was was just right. protecting and keeping up you know our, our so-called communities our environment what you know whatever you want to call it and stuff like right. that so we have the blueprint it's just are we going to build on that or are we just going to you know look at it and just be like oh that was that was nice back then like no it right. could be nice now <laughs> you know but yeah which is why the black panthers were the number one target of the you know of the government to be against the government or for the government to be against them because they had that mindset that they was just trying to uplift our areas they didn't really they weren't worried about nowhere else it was just focused specifically on our areas and trying to keep our areas clean, keep our kids focused um, and give us and instill pride into our people. So that was, that was very important. And we can do that right now. We choose not to. And, and we just talked about how we have this social media now. So there are many ways that we could go about doing it. We just don't seem to be uh, have a vested interest into doing it. And that's something that we need to change per our mentality. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh we live in a we live in a drama culture, so you know, exactly. people people's priorities are kind of. And I, I'll I'll be real, you know, I think we all kind of dive into you know drama and different things, you know, whether right. it's movies or what you know or right. you know whatever it's from time to time. But it, in my opinion, you should still have a main focus. So you know, even if yeah. you want to kind of dabble in the fuck shit every now and again, like you know, we all you know, you might want to watch a twerk video or two or something, you know, whatever it is that you went to. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know. Exactly. But bring it back home. That, you right. Know. Our recall <laughs> game is very low. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, I was, if you have anything else to say, but I'm gonna jump to the next yeah, question. Yeah. All right. Uh we might get in trouble for this one. I, I don't know, but <laughs> we'll see. Let's see. Uh how crucial is it for uh uh black women uh to wear their natural hair and for black men to not be colorist? when it comes to uh, ending self-hate? Like how how important is that? Do you think that that's, you know, the number one priority, top five? Do you think that's just something that we can worry about later on? Like where like where do you feel as far as women wearing weaves and black men being uh, color, color struck or colorist as, as people say? 
Well, to me, with black women being the mothers of our community, that makes them the mothers of our daughters. Um, and we want to create daughters that are looking up to their moms as opposed to looking up to the Cardi B's of society. Um, as And really the, the, the odd thing is the kids looking up to Cardi B and the moms are too. So, you know, we have to deal with that as well. But as far as the natural hair is concerned, even uh, for a prime example, the Black Panther Party, if you take a look at the women that were uh, influential in those movements, uh, natural hair being not proud of who you are, it it just is more powerful. The image itself is more powerful. Now, we do have certain areas in this society that will, uh, uh, you know, shame or you, you even see stories about schools, jobs, uh, the military that are against natural hair. But I do believe in my heart that if all black women were just to say, fuck that shit, I'm not going to I'm not going to hide my hair because you're uncomfortable. There's no way they can fire everybody. There's no way they can kick everybody out. I do believe that. But that to me is the, one of the most important things. And to our children being able to even pass something as simple as a doll test where you have a black doll that has kinky hair and the child will choose the white doll as being more beautiful. Uh, even if something as simple as that, just instilling pride into our daughters and giving them uh, something that looks like themselves to look up to. I think that's very important. And I know that in this society that, you know, people will often say, and I'm not going to, this is something that's said a lot is that, well, just because a woman is natural doesn't mean that she has black pride. I do. I have noticed that as well. There are a lot of coon ass women with natural hair, beautiful hair, but their minds ain't right. Uh, there are women who wear weave um, who don't have that self love as far as the weave part is concerned, but then they may be more uh, pro black um, in their actions than some of the women who are natural. So I, I think a lot of I'm, I'm ready for that. Those both those things to come together to where the mind and the hair and everything is all together. And then our daughters can have uh, women to look up to. And as far as black men are concerned, as far as this colorism is concerned, um, I find it very problematic that black men will, uh, you know, shame darker skinned women and hoist up lighter skinned women over um, dark skinned women. And that's something that's kind of embedded into our moms, minds through the media and society. And sadly, we don't have any, uh, the parents within our community kind of lets this ideology go. Um, you even have the fathers of the community. I've noticed black men all the time that talk like this and they don't see anything wrong with it. Like it should make you, it, it should be shameful for you to speak, especially a lot of them be darker than, you know, dark as me and you darker than, than as your shirt, you know, right. And they'll still won't find beauty in themselves. And to me, all of it um, kind of uh, comes down to self hate. And we have to, as parents, you know, fight away the self-hate in the society will instill in our children and to have other children make fun of other black children as well. We hear stories all the time of black children being bullied. You have black kids being bullied by other black kids about their hair, you know, uh, their hair being called nappy, their skin being called dark. You hear jokes about dark skin. You hear jokes about light skin. I think that that's something that we have to, uh, you know, that's something we got to nip in the bud at the house. Um, within as far as our prospective communities are concerned and create that that environment of love. And I don't think we're doing a, a good job of that at all um, in any type of way. We're not doing a good job of that. And I think that's something that we need to take more seriously as a people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with that 10,000 percent, you know, even just through my experiences, you know, I think I've talked about this a little bit on my channel. I live in Iowa. You know, shockers, black people in Iowa. You know, all right. all fifteen of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we out here. I, yeah, it's, right. it's you know, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, I got a I got a cousin who lives in uh, Chicago uh, now, and he was actually telling me last just last year, just a little just family history with our family about how when um uh, our our grandmother and her sister when they because we we're originally from Mississippi like back before the fifties that's. You know, like a lot of bad people from the South, obviously, for obvious reasons. But um, they moved from Mississippi in the 50s. You can imagine why. And they moved up north. My uh, great aunt moved to Chicago. And then my grandmother moved to Iowa. And she just she just decided just it was just about jobs. You know, she just got a job in Iowa. My uh, great great aunt got a job out in Illinois. So literally, I could have grown up in Chicago that easy if it was just it was just a simple job switch. Right. But. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but um, yeah, even just through my experiences, either through family or just you know 
just black black people that I just you know met throughout the years, things like that. Honestly, I did not know how bad it was within just our in, individual minds and how deep that stuff was until I got older and started seeing some of uh, my friends and just black people in general having kids and what they would say to their children. Like this black women that I've seen, uh, I guess make fun of, for lack of a better term, make fun of their daughters when their daughters, little girls that, you know, they, they get their guidance from, from us, from the adults, asking their mom, hey, can you straighten my hair so I can look like the girls in my school, AKA, you know, the white girls, because it's Iowa, most people here is white. Right. So they try to emulate them. And I'm, I'm sitting there just, you know, just peeping game. I'm thinking in my mind, okay, the, you know, the mom's about to school the daughter and say, hey, you know, first of all, why do you want to look like them? Second of all, whoopty woo, this is why you shouldn't want to, nothing wrong. I think it's going to be something to that effect. Right. She's going to break it down. Like, you know, you don't need to look like them because, you know, X, Y, and Z, this is where you came from. This is who you are. You know, your hair is beautiful. You know, I'm going to teach you a different hair, natural hair. So, you know, something to that effect, right? Instead, she on teaser talking about, oh, she won't look like these white girls. No, no, she won't look like Becky. And her daughter kind of looked confused. Like, who's like, what's what's Becky? Like, what, you know, right. I'm like, no, don't, don't put, like, she, she's still in, she don't know. She's right. asking what, who's Becky, which, which I'm like, good. You don't need to know nothing about that. So why, I'm like, why are you teasing this little girl for one to straighten her hair, teach her why she shouldn't want to. Right. I'm like, she can still be safe. If she's asking questions like what's, what's Becky or who's Becky, she clearly, she don't even know why she wants her hair straight. She just wants it. Cause that's what she's, you know, being slowly conditioned to believe subconsciously. And I'm like, man, but I'm like, this ain't my kid. I'm like, I don't know right. if I should really right. say something. But I'm just like, damn, like, you know, in 10 years, you know, this girl gonna be grown. Like who knows where, you know, I'm like, man, like, why do we, I'm just like, I'm sitting there just kind of looking, you know, cute little girl, you know, uh, beautiful mother, anything like that. I'm just like, damn, like, don't be like, oh, you want to be like these white girls and shame her for that. Right. And make her, I, I could just look, I look in the girl's face. You could just tell the confusion and the shame, right. just kind of like all this type of stuff. You could just see it going through her mind. And, you know, like, damn, like, you know I, I want it so bad to be like, look, you got beautiful hair, you know, you could braid it, you can do all different things with it. You know, here's some photos of, you know, some black queens and fairs from back in the day. Here's some women from the seventies. Here's some, right. you know, just something. I'm like, man, this is I'm like, I don't have no children. This ain't my place. Right. Damn. You know, we got or even it. just brother or even just brothers, you know, with the colorism thing with like, like you said, like, you know, men are complexion and darker. I guess we're technically medium skin and I don't get into all that different right. Right. categorizations. We, we, we black, but right. men of a darker hue talking about on that Kodak black type of stuff. Like I've right. heard black men, live in, in my face i'm thinking this is just some some you know rappers type of stuff some, you know, some that the mumble rappers do i'm hearing them talking the same mess i'm like looking i'm like bro like, like why are you why are you talking shit about a certain demographic of the same race of women i'm like don't you get mad when white men say this about you i'm like you're a dark skin bro you're talking to me why are you saying this no nah, man some with these these dark skin women i'm like but you're a dark skin man so is something wrong with you no nah, it's just the dark skin women I'm like, listen, if you had to hear your entire life from a little girl to a grown woman from your own men, the main people that you look for, for, you know, uh, love and acceptance, all these things, and you're hearing this your entire life, wouldn't that make you mad? Wouldn't you get a so-called bad attitude? And that's not me trying to defend anybody who just has a bad attitude for no reason when you're being respectful, but it's like, well, damn, like, I'd be mad too if, right. if all I'm hearing from black women is, oh, you dark motherfucker, this is why I only mess with light-skinned dudes that look like Drake, because you dark-skinned men, this is like, well, shit, I can't help my complexion. I love my complexion. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I'd I be a little salty, too. Like, And right. he was like, you know what, man? You right. Like, I, I probably should stop saying I'm like, look, I'm not trying to tell you how to think, but at the very least, stop saying that shit out loud. Exactly. <laughs> at the very least. Exactly. You can start there. <laughs> you know, people that all the time, nobody asked you what shade of black you liked. One thing yeah. about black people is real ain't nothing wrong with liking light skinned women, by the way. Like, you know, it's like we all black, but you ain't got to do this whole divisive. You don't have you know. to. We do it, we do it without even being asked. Mm -hmm. Nobody asks you what yeah. tone you like. We'll just say, we'll just come out of our mouths and say that. Just uh, to me, it's more powerful. Well, I love black women. There you you okay. cover a whole spectrum of people that you ain't even gotta break it down. Black women, I love black men. You don't have to break it down whether you love light skin, medium, who have green eyes, or whatever you are into. <laughs> black people have a tendency to volunteer that information for yeah. no reason. Nobody asked you what tone you like. 
Nobody said we'll just volunteer <clears throat> information. Like you said, we should be thinking. I mean, if you have preferences like that, which you should probably be trying to figure out why you have preferences like that, but at yeah. least shut the fuck up. Nobody's <laughs> asking you to add that to the game. Nobody's asking for your opinion as to what shade you like. You don't hear uh, white people talking about, well, I like pale white bitches versus tan bitches. Like, <laughs> no one else does that. But black people, yeah, get that shit well, even Asian people, you got darker skin, you know, East exactly. Asian, you know, lighter. You know, I, I've never heard that from you know. That's yeah. not me trying to, you know. But I, I don't, you know, and I know Asian folks. I know Hispanic people and you know white folks, and I, yeah, you don't really hear that too much. You know what I'm no. saying? It's just, you know, it's weird. You know, and I, I'm just talking to this uh, black woman on uh, Instagram a couple of weeks ago, and um, somehow we got on the topic of you know preferences when it comes to skin complexion, and she asked me what mine was. And I was like, honestly, I don't know. She's like, oh, stop playing. Like, you know, like it's, it's okay if you like light skin. I'm like, no, like she she was like around, she made a little bit darker than me. I don't know. Like right. chocolate, you know, sister. And she just automatically assumed because I said I don't know that that meant, you know, I I, I like light skinned women or I prefer them over darker skin or medium toned women, which I can understand why she reacted that way, because look at you know the Kodak blacks in them. Right. And I was like, no, I was like, seriously. I've never thought about it. Like I just like black women, and I, I seriously had to think about my, uh, you know, the women that I've black women that I've dated in the past and things like this. I was like, well, shit. I guess going off with the women, black women that I talk to normally, most of them are either maybe slightly lighter than me, the same shade as me, or darker. I'm like, I don't really know too many lighter, like like light light black women that I really mess with, and that's nothing against them. I'm like, maybe subconsciously I prefer women around my color right. darker, but I've never just constantly been like, oh, well, she's light skin. I ain't talking to her. Or, oh, she's too dark. Like, I don't, like, yeah. I've never really, I'm like, dang, yo, this girl, she looks good. She seemed like, you know, her head's on right. Let me talk. Let me see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's black women that I've messed with that are from, you know, South Sudan, which, you know, if you know the region of Africa that's from, they're like jet black. Like, right. like I think L L L Lupita is from like, it's from right. Kenya, which is right yeah. by there. They're yeah. like that complexion. You know, I talk to women my color a little bit lighter than me, whatever, whatever, and and light like light skinned women too. But I'm like, I you know, I'm like, I think I'm by women around my color. I but I just don't think about it that way. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know, so it always trips me out when people that 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 is their make or break is like, oh well, I would have fucked with her, but she's too dark. I'm like, first of all, what's too dark? What does that mean? Second of all, this is what the make or break is: is her skin right. tone. <laughs> like, damn, Who like are the fathers of our daughters. That's what, they, yeah. like, you don't get to choose. You don't know. A lot of these guys want to, a lot of guys like Kodak Black. I, I heard you use him as an example. Yeah. They want to be with somebody lighter so that their child cannot be their, their complexion. Or just like that football player that they did a little toast to light skin babies, the boy okay. um, okay. San Diego. They want kids <laughs> lighter than them. But that just says, well, you hate your skin tone. You hate yourself. So mm. to me, all of it is a reflection of self hate if you are dark skinned person and you sitting around talking about how much you love light skin you wanting to secretly you want to blend your skin in with theirs in the hopes that you make something lighter than yourself that to me it all still spawns from self hate and just like the girl who asked you what tone of woman do you like you should now i don't believe you should say i don't know you should say, i like black women period <laughs> i'm not changing my answer <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I don't think about it like that. And I think we as black people have to stop doing ourselves a disservice by breaking us down into shades. I just love black women. I don't, I don't give a damn to me on the whole spectrum. I don't have a preference of light skin, dark, dark. I don't have a preference at all. I just love black women that got some sense about themselves. And that's all it is to it. And that's how you yeah. answer the question. Yeah, I, I always thought that was weird. You know, like, oh, well, I don't mess with this shade or that shade or I prefer. And, I you mean, know, imagine a white bitch asking a, 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 a white man, what shade of white do you like? <laughs> you like pink? Do you like, like, uh, <laughs> like, you know, El Valle? like a raw, uncooked color? Or... <laughs> right. Nobody, nobody doing that. We got to stop that shit, for real. No, yeah, no, you no, you definitely right about it. I got one thing I never thought about it, though. And when she asked me, I'm like, shit, I don't, you know, like, y'all black to me. Like, you know, and it's going crazy as black people. We have the most diverse phenotype in the world. Like, you know, I know right. what I'm saying. It's like, you can have... You know, there's you know albino African you know right. women with blonde hair and all. I mean, Afro blonde hair. Right. You know, uh, uh, so-called fair skin, which I don't know where that came from, but fair skin. You know, you have from. your jet black. You know, beautiful women like Lapita. You got every, women in the middle like the Janelle Monae skin tone, which I guess is me. You know, it, it, you know, all sorts of different. Everything. 
you know, there's black people with, you know, so-called East Asian, you know, eyes, which really that's a black feature, but we say yeah. it's Asian because we don't know where right. stuff comes from, you know. It's, it's, it's like, take your, you, you know, you got black folks with slimmer noses if you, it, you know, what I don't know, whatever. It's like, Everything. you have all yeah. different types of black, you know, from, you know, 4C hair type to, you know, different hair, you know, it's just like, fam, you got a whole a la carte, <laughs> you know, I don't understand why you got to just be like, oh, I only mess with women that are, right. you know, <laughs> this shit, it's just like, okay, like, you know, <laughs> there's a whole, uh, you got a whole feast of, you know, but hey, like you said, you like black women, I like black women, you know. That's it, that's the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but we was on that one for a minute. Let's uh let's get to the next one where we at. But yeah, it, it all is a is a form of self hate. I, I agree. And the same thing with good hair, you know, on the on the flip side with black women, I, I hear that more. I don't hear you talk about shade as much, at least I personally haven't heard it, but I hear them saying, Oh, I want to get with that black man because he has good hair. I'm mean, like, what good what what is good? Right. Like what makes hair good and what makes hair bad? Like I never, right. you know, but um Let's see where we at number five. Uh, what can black men do to strengthen our relationships uh, with uh, black women? I can type that wrong, whatever. With black women, as far as friendships or significant others, or just any type of business relationship, just the whole nine. Like, what can we as black men do to strengthen that relationship with black uh, women? In your opinion, as a fellow black man. Well, one of the main things I think what we just kind of alluded to in the topic we just got through talking about is stop coming out of our mouth saying stupid shit, pitting one woman against another creates a competition amongst our women, um, which leads to a whole nother problem where you got dark skinned women versus light skinned women. We have to stop creating those divides within our women. And that's something that we can do because women um, naturally seek validation from us. Um, we can also stop acting like I've heard black men say things like, well, you know, black women got bad attitudes so we can stop generalizing our women as well because there are different just like there are different skin tones and everything that we have well there are different uh, attitude types amongst our women there are different upbringings amongst our women there's different there's different ideologies amongst our women so we as black men can stop putting out this you know this painting with one brush type of rhetoric uh, uh against our women and it's something i'm i used to be guilty of so this is this is about growth this is something I used to do myself. I would you know, paint black women the same way. Um, but I grew to understand how powerful that is for you to be a black man and you to do that, especially with the advent of social media. Because now you putting this out here for all black women, not just black women, even little black girls to hear this shit. We could do a much better job of not pitting our women against each other, making one feel better than the other. Or, you know, dark skinned girls got bad attitudes, which I've heard a lot of black men say, which is ridiculous. Um, and light skinned girls or, you know, prettier or we have to stop creating those or even buying into those divisions amongst our own women. And we can do a much better job of protecting our women um, as a whole, uh, making them feel safe around us as opposed to feeling, um, you know, uh, uh, like they're going to be perpetual victims, um, not only at our hands, but at the hands of the white man and his mama as well, because we are uh, a lot of us are abusive, whether it be physical, mental, uh, spiritual, verbal, a lot of uh, black men uh, take time out to abuse, but that's coming from stuff that we went through when we were young with our parents and in our communities. We have to stop projecting those negative um, ideologies onto our women to uplift their spirits um, and take, uh, I guess, take responsibility for what we're creating out here and what, what leads to these mentalities. All the lies that black men tell we got to stop lying so damn much. We have to. And I'm not sitting here being exonerated. I'm putting myself in there with everybody else. We have yeah, to stop lying so much. We have to stop catering. We, 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 we feel like we're protecting our women by lying to them. We have to stop lying to them. We have to be all the way real with them, even if it's going to cause us to lose them. Because a lot of us lie out of fear of loss. We have to stop lying because that creates a bitterness. So now you're responsible for that business. You thought you were doing something to protect her, but now you've created you know, where she's heartbroken from the lie you told. We have to stop telling so many lies to attain uh, or keep women. We have to stop doing that because that's causing women to be better and to not trust what black men are talking about. No matter what, we have to we have to stop lying on every level. And I think if we just do these things, 
that will increase the relations, um, the sex relations um, between black men and women, whether it's on a friendship level or a relationship level or whatever level it's on. We have to show more respect for our women overall and stop all this goddamn lying. Yeah, I pretty much <laughs> think to say the same thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, that's basically, I think what it is, and I, I don't mean this in disrespect towards uh, black women, but you know, you hear this from all women that, you know, I don't need a man and all that type of stuff. And I don't mean, once again, I don't mean that any sort of, you know, diss or anything like that. You know, that comes from a lot of defense mechanisms because right. like you said, you know, a lot of black women have been hurt, you know, mentally, physically, whatever the case may be, to the point where they feel like, well, dang, I can't rely on this group of people like I want to. I can't really just fall back and put my guard down like I want to. So I'm gonna just say that I don't need, you know, this group of people. When obviously we know that's not true. Right. You know, as black men, as any any race of males, you know, we are supposed to be the leaders. But I think as black men, we don't know what that means because a lot of us haven't had that, you know, guys, whether it was a you know a father figure or just really any OG or any kind of older uh, male figure, whether it's a big brother, any, you know, anybody like that. So we don't know. I think a lot of us think being a leader means, you know, bitch, shut, 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 shut the fuck up, get in the kitchen, you know, suck my dick and, you know, right. call it a day. I'm about to go to work and, you know, it's just like, no, you know, at least in my opinion, I think it's more about collaboration. But as men, we should kind of be the ones to say, hey, this is the path we're going to go. But if you see something along this road, we need to stop or you see, you know, a goddamn raccoon, just to make a pun, you see a raccoon going across the street and you're like, hey, slow down, you know, or hey, run, run that motherfucker over. You know, the woman should be right there in that passenger seat, you know, as your co-pilot. I think we think that, oh, they got to be way in the back flying coach while we, right. you know, the sole person driving this car or flying this plane, whatever it is. And in my opinion, that's not a leader, that's a dictator. Right. And we don't, we don't need that. We don't need that type of mess. We've seen, you know, dictatorships throughout history. And, and, and just right now, I mean, that's right. what goes on at places, countries in Africa. And I mean, you know, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, this whole government basically is just a group dictatorship. I mean, I, you know, I mean, me and you both have the same uh, opinions on voting. So I'm not even going to get into that bullshit. <laughs> but, you know, I think that we need to listen to our women. But then at the same time, you know, as as men, we need to elevate our minds so we can know what the correct path is and nothing wrong with making mistakes. That's where I think women can come in and say, Hey man, you know, you, you're kind of being off the road. You might want to, you know, right. Straighten back up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Cause women have better intuition than we do. I mean, they have better sight than we do, but as men, we should be the ones really, you know, controlling that vehicle, but you know, they should be right there on our side. We want, we want them in the damn trunk. Right. And just take them out when we're hungry and we want some sex. That ain't right. You right. know, and that, that's a part of that abuse that you were basically, Saying that's kind of put into a metaphor, but you know, um, that's kind of, I guess, my uh, me answer my own question. But, um, yeah, I think that we do need to do a better job because there's no reason why <clears throat> I should hear so many uh black women saying that they don't need men. And I was asking, them, like, well, wait a minute, you wouldn't be here if <laughs> a man <laughs> didn't impregnate your mom. Like, so what you mean? Right. I'm like, okay, they're talking about their relationships, right? With men, they're really, they're just really like, man. a man paired with stress. What they're saying is, I don't yeah. need the stress, I don't need the abuse, I don't need the lies. It's not that they don't need men. They're saying they don't need what men bring to the table. Because we know they need dick. That's one yeah. thing they can't sit around and say <laughs> they don't need. They gotta stop playing with that shit. So what they're talking about is they don't need everything that comes with that man. They don't need all that stress, all the lies, all the hurt, um, all the betrayal. And even though, um, like you were alluding to, that if we're gonna be leaders. It's a job of a uh, of a leader to be able to train and teach your woman to be a leader in your stead. If you are not in that position, your woman should be able to come fill that position. It's, if you putting her in the goddamn trunk all the time, she can't learn from you from back there. She need to be up here with you. So just in case something happened to you, she can pick up the mantle and keep going and keep banging. And we and that's another thing we got to change about our, in our minds, too, is you can't keep her back there. Because she can't learn from back there. And if something happened to you and say you go down, because we do go down, she needs to be able to be able to have a mindset where you done taught her something where she can pick it up and keep going where you left off. And that's something else we got to take um, and put in our minds for not only our woman, but for our daughters, too. We got to start training our daughters um, to be better as well in this area. Just in case something happened to the leader, well, you need to be able to come in and, you know, substitute out. If something happened to him, you'd be able to come in here and, and, and handle the business the same way he would. 
a tag tag team. You know, that's why Black Panthers to me was so great because you saw black men and black women at the forefront, you know, handling business. You know what I mean? It right. wasn't just, you know, a whole bunch of black men and then you just saw right. black women in the back somewhere, you know, making some some chicken or something. You know, it wasn't some weird shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, a lot of these, you know, you had a lot of black men within the Black Panther Party creating, uh, I guess you could say, institutions, if you will, for, you know, black women that have been abused and trying to help them and just, you know, giving free lunches to children. You, you know, you saw, you saw, you know, black men doing this, but at the same time, you also saw black women right there as leaders, as spokes, spokeswomen or spokespeople, whatever, right. as well. I think, you know, our our egos and our pride today or something with, with us as black men, it's, it's just hard. I don't know if we're just scared or something. I don't know what it is, but it's like, we just, oh, we, we can't, we can't have them. It's like, why? Like, what? like these, this is our reflection. These are our counterparts. Why wouldn't you want them right next to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, you know, they, they do want when it, when it's time to, you know, lay down and get busy. Cause you know, there's a joke that I've said this before too. It's a joke saying, you know, if black women don't need us so much, why are all these black babies still popping up? It's like, like you said, it's not that they don't want us when it's time to, to lay that pipe. It's just right. all the extra burden and stress, which any sane person doesn't want any extra stress. So right. they're not wrong in feeling that way. No, nobody is, you know what right. I'm saying? And you know, we black men will say that goofy stuff too. Like, oh, this is why I mess with white girls and blah, blah, blah. I'm like basically what they're trying to trying to allude to is that other races of women uh, give less stress, which is complete bullshit. It is. <laughs> that's, that's complete, it is complete bullshit. Even going back to the bad attitudes thing, I mean the the worst attitudes I've ever seen. Just personally, not just this excludes all the the so called barbecue baggies in them or whatever you want to call them, the white female terrorists. Um, just personally, uh, white women, in, in my opinion, have had the worst and been the rudest people. Not all of them, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to be like, you know, every white person is goddamn Hitler. There, there's definitely levels to white supremacy and racist ideology, but it's all some fucked up shit. Right. But they've had to me the worst attitudes out of anybody. Nice people that I've met are uh, black women. Now, of course, you know, you meet black some black women that are on, you know, some right crazy stuff. But that's just some people are just right different. You know, what I mean, that's not a black one to me. There's no such thing as a black black woman attitude or at least right. in a negative way that doesn't make any sense to me like what like you're basically excluding every other uh uh female that i don't right. you know that doesn't make sense the same, you know? they, the same way they do with black women's attitudes the same way they say all black men are would be thugs it's yeah. about propaganda it's the same the propaganda that black women get they haven't necessarily been able to criminalize black women like they have black men what they did with black women is say well they're at it's the attitude with them and yeah. you know criminals so the same propaganda that's been against us is a black man. I can say, well, I'm not no criminalized. I'm not sitting around, you know, that's not me. And if I can say that, then just as well, a black woman can say, look, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about, but this ain't me. This is propaganda that you've been getting fed to. Same propaganda I'm getting about you. If you ain't no uh, robber or, you know, holding up no uh, new gas <laughs> every night, then just as well as I don't have an attitude every goddamn day. It's the same things. And we both have fallen for that propaganda. And we actually, we believe a lot of the propaganda that the white man is mama putting out here about us to keep us separate like that. That's what we do. Yeah. I mean, you even see it in movies and TV shows. I, I, I talk about this sometimes. You just, even just on a snap or just the people, you can't just think uh, just, just in your mind, how many times you've seen a movie or a show will it have a black woman as like a secretary or one of them type of jobs. And they always, they always have the, that that civic black woman in those roles act the same with that that cartoonish sass and that bad attitude, all this type of stuff. Right. And I'm not saying you don't have people, people in general that can be like this, right. but it's all they always have a black woman in that role and just acting like they just hate the world and they don't want to, you know, be you know, right. be there and just add extra attitude. But then we get programmed to then project that image of a black woman and that personality. Onto all black women, right. so we just automatically assume, oh well, she looks like that black black woman I saw on that movie, and then and she was mean in that movie, so she's got to be the same way. And it's right. just like, what? like, come on, man. like you got to ask yourself, is who made the movie? That's the question. Them credits <laughs> is, but who made that movie? Who put that propaganda out here? That's what who wrote the script. <laughs> right, exactly. That's why we so the saying is you got to flip the script, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> but. You know, we we fall for, you know, I think we forget a lot of times black people that, you know, racism, in, especially in this country, affects everybody to some degree, even our, ourselves, which, whether it's self-hate or us harming other black people, because then we believe, oh, well, 
they must not be shit because all I've seen from, right. you know, black people is garbage, whether it's America, whether it's, you know, them bullshit as, you know, if you if you send tits, that's tits a day to this poor uh, African over here and all right. that, it's like, fam, man, they got skyscrapers and shit over there. Right. They, man, they, they got it popping over there. Right. Uh, mo most of the, the wealthiest resources come out of Africa is just the government, governments over there don't allow the, the people to have control of that of those resources right. and wealth but you know it's 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 all whether it's from the, the motherland whether it's over here we just get projected just this after you know I imagery of ourselves and then we want to you know put that then onto our people and it, you know we gotta stop especially as black men because like you said uh whether it's black children or black women they kind of look to us <clears throat> for uh that guidance whether people right. want to admit that or not it is what it is so right. you know we gotta stop dropping the ball, you know, just a as a group, not saying that there aren't black men out here hand on their business, but we, you know, I, I, think, I think a lot of it is too, we need to to check, as black men, we need to check other black men respectfully, yeah. not on some, hey, what's up, nigga, I'm about, you know, but just, right. just like, hey, hey, man, like, I, you know, we, we just can't be doing this, man, like, you know, but th that's why this type of stuff is important, you know, just, you know, anybody, right. if you got a cell phone, if you got, you know, uh, uh, just any kind of camera and you got an internet connection. I mean, you know, anybody watching this for real, just have these conversations or just, you know, link up with people through social media. Even if you don't want to talk, you know, camera, like even just texting people through Instagram, like you, you'd be surprised in the stories that you hear, you know, just asking questions right. about, you know, what's going on out here, man. But um, I'm going I'm to jump to the next one unless you have something you wanted to. Nah, go ahead, bro. All right. Um, let's see where we at. Okay. Number six. Um, <clears throat> With this whole, you know, ADOS movement that's going on, and uh, the main thing with that is Black Americans, generational Black Americans, or or ADOS, uh, uh, American descendants of slavery, whatever you want to call it, that we should and are owed reparations through the um, American government. Uh, some this actually this is actually probably one of the main questions I've, I've been actually wanted to ask. Um, <clears throat> do you think this uh, ADOS movement? Um, is enough to dismantle white supremacy as a whole? Do you think that this is a step in the right direction? Um, where do you where do you see the ADOS movement going? Do you think this is just some kind of you know hashtag trend? And also, what what does reparations mean uh, to you? Um, well, I guess to deal with the first part of your question first, as I do, uh, I believe the ADOS is most definitely a step in the right direction because it's causing black people to not only have to identify with a certain uh, a certain group it's also causing them to do some research anything that causes black people to do research i can't be against it because it, it is it's self-defeating i mean if you want to for me to, for somebody to be against ados would mean that they also against black empowerment because these people that are um saying that they ados people that are um would be new members of the ados they're doing research they're going back and seeing what the government is owed. They're going back and look at the past atrocities of, that this government has committed against black people or ADOS. You, they have to look at that. You can't just come in and hashtag ADOS and let that be it. You have to do a certain amount of research to understand why you're hashtagging ADOS. And that research that you do behind the hashtag is powerful to me anyway. Um, even though I'm not necessarily, uh, um, you know, I don't hashtag ADOS or, or anything like that. I mean, I've been... I know what the fuck going on. I've been talking about this. I do not believe it's going to dismantle a system of white supremacy in any type of way. But I do believe that there will be a, even uh, there will be more black people that will wake up to the information that's being presented by the ADOS. Even if they just, you know, just crack that door open for you a little bit, just for you to, you know, have that desire to go get the information. I think that's the most powerful aspect of the ADOS is opening up black people's minds to information to identity, to understanding how your uh, plight and struggle is very specific to you here in America um, and understanding what reparations is. As you allude to, uh, I allude to the second part of your question is we deal with reparations. One of the things the ADOS is doing as well is making other black people look at all these other motherfuckers out here that got reparations, but you didn't. Now, if that don't make you feel something on the inside, then you, you lost to begin with, but that should spark something in you to make you go do some research. 
All this stuff the ADO is putting out here is forcing black people to do a certain amount of research. And from that research, they may do more research, but they at least have to look at, well, Jews got reparations. You have, um, well, white Jews got reparations. You have Asians that got reparations. I just saw a story recently about um, some Italians, the black, uh, black mayor uh, in uh, Louisiana um, is going to be giving an apology to the 11 Italians that were <clears throat> uh, back in the 1800s. They got reparations. The, the mm. Italian government got reparations just for those Italians being hung here. So you have mm. everybody else, Native Americans, getting reparations of some sort, some form. Yep. Everybody else getting reparations. As a black person, you should feel some type of way about that. That should fuel some type of fire in you. If you didn't already have a fire in you, it should at least ignite it. So, I, again, I don't think it's going to dismantle the system of white supremacy at all. But I do believe that it's causing black people to at least do some research and to identify with something. If you didn't have anything to identify with before, you have to now be forced to identify with something. And I think that is very, very powerful to the movement, not only for ourselves as grown people, but even to what we teach our kids now. Because now, if you ADOS and you and signed up to be a part of the reparations argument, you got to talk to your kids about that. That's giving them more knowledge. That's, that's trickle down information, trickle down knowledge, which I think we could stand plenty of amongst our people. Um, but again, as far as dismantling the system of white supremacy, it's not going to do that. But I do believe these conversations are important and they're also forcing um, these government people that's trying to come be in the government is forcing them to actually deal with the questions as well. It's making us change what we say to them as opposed to, well, they black. So I'm going to vote for them. It's making us put a little bit more on that as far as tangible things are concerned. And I think that's also very important. So this system knows that you can't keep coming at us with this bullshit. Now we asking about this. Every time you come, we don't ask you about this. So I think that's also important as to how they address <clears throat> us as a people and make them understand that we getting smarter. So y'all motherfuckers gotta step y'all games up, um, game up a little bit more too. Yeah, man, absolutely. You know, it's 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 just real sad, and I think it's disrespectful to our ancestors when one we haven't gotten any sort of reparations uh, at all. Whether you know, I think did, did you did you answer as uh, far as what reparations? As far as if you think it's more land or money or it's just oh no, I didn't get into that actually. Um, okay. And, and well, I guess I'll say reparations, what would be a good form of reparations to me, neither one of those will be good enough. And I know that that's not a popular opinion, but whether you got money or land, doesn't matter if this government still targets you. And that's one thing that we have to, even with the ADOS, they need to make sure that's a part of their mission statement is, well, I need y'all to leave us the fuck alone too. You can't just give me land and you can still come and invade land. We have um, same situation with Black Wall Street. That was that was land, but they was able to still come and invade that land and terrorize the people on that land. And that's what they've been able to do, regardless of where we set up and we go mind our own business, because that wasn't the only Black Wall Street in Tulsa, <clears throat> several black business districts all over this nation. But they were still able to invade them all. We had several here in North Carolina, one in Durham, um, one here in Durham, North Carolina. But they was able to invade it. So if you're going to give me land. But you're not going to. Uh, keep your ass the fuck off the goddamn land. If you still gonna terrorize me on the land that you give me, then the land don't mean shit. If you are gonna give me money, if you are gonna give me the money, but you're not gonna allow me to use that money to build black infrastructure without terrorizing me at the end of it, then that money don't mean shit. So whether we pushing for land or money, which I think the conversation don't need to stop there, it also has to be about the terrorism that we faced in this country for centuries we have to deal with that as well because if they're going to give you anything and still terrorize you then don't mean shit so i do think i don't know if ados again i don't keep up with them specifically or you know be on them i don't know what's in their mission statement but if there isn't some type of protection or some type of exposing about the terrorism that comes along with the reparations or comes along with us just being black in this country then they need to add that to the mission statement to be to have a fully effective movement is you have to talk about the terrorism and the tactics that they use um against our people in general yeah absolutely you know because basically like you were saying as far as the money and the land aspect if they just give us you know a certain amount of acres a certain amount of money whatever it is and they can just take it away that's not reparation that's basically just a, a loan i don't want a loan <laughs> i won't be left alone right <laughs> but <Yeah>. you know <laughs> like they they can't you know 
it's like you were saying the Native, you know, Native Americans have gotten something. I mean, they still you know are, are fucked up, but they at least have gotten some tangible. Jap Japanese Americans for you know the internment camps that they were in for a few years. Uh, the the Homestead Act back in the 1860s, white folks got came over here and got free stuff right. off off of the backs of our ancestors. I, I didn't know about the Italian thing, but I guess I mean they're white, but you know specifically that nationality of white people. I ain't know nothing about that, but yeah, you got three three white folks got hung and they got some. You know, uh, I believe Barack Obama was given uh, Jews uh, reparations here in America when that was something that happened over in Germany. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, you got all this different uh, type of stuff. I'm not sure about the Hispanic community, the so-called Hispanic community. I mean, they're technically a lot of them are Native Americans, technically, but uh, uh, you know, it, everybody's gotten some and. Uh, even just a, a crazy story, uh, a few weeks ago, I was uh, over at my folks place, just kind of, you know, checking up on them, chopping up with them, which I feel every every black person, if you have the privilege right. of having a relationship with your mother and father, even if you don't live in the same area, at least try to have some type of contact with them. Because, I right. mean, no, no, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, jinx anybody or if you even believe in that, but you're not, you know, they're, they're only going to be for so long. We, we all have an, an expiration date. So, you know, if you have a relationship with your, with your parents, it's just to say anybody, definitely try to you know, have to keep up on that, you know, but that's, you know, anyway, right. I was talking to my folks uh, and we was talking about reparations and things like that. And uh, I was asking what they thought about that. Cause my, my dad just turned uh, 70 uh, in, in March. So my, my parents are kind of older. I think mean, that's part of the reason why that's kind of helped me to have some of this knowledge. Cause I, my parents were actually uh, old enough to remember the civil rights movement. You know I mean? Right. They weren't babies. They weren't, I mean, they were, grown enough to or you know old enough to remember right uh that just it's like we remember 9 11 things like that that's kind of how that right. was for them so I, I was uh talking to them about how you know you know our last names aren't even our last names and how we need to you know sue this country for all the atrocities and terrorism that we've gone through and still go through how we should get free counseling i, I think that should be a part of reparations too we should all get free counseling for the ptsd that we've all been undiagnosed for for hundreds of years whatever how long it's been you know we were just kind of just you know just saying all this different stuff and uh my mom was like and she was always funny you talked about last names because i was talking we were just talking about you know all that type of stuff she's uh my mom's maiden last name is uh a anderson and I, I was asking her if that came from a slave owner or or if she knows or how you know because some black folks at the slavery end is some of them you know chose a different last name still a white last name because we didn't know nothing about right our African connection, you know, that culture. <clears throat> and I was asking her, and she was saying that uh, my uh, grandfather, his original last name was uh, Thompson. And I was like, what? I, I know I know nothing about this. She, I was like, Thompson? I'm like, Anderson. I thought that was your, you know, main last name. She's like, no, nah, it was uh, Thompson. She's like, she's like, but what what it was, um, my grandfather and, and his brothers used to work for this trucking company owned by this uh, white man whose last name was Anderson. And I and this is back in Mississippi in I don't know, the, the 30s or something, just way, way back. And um, uh, she was saying that it was like a Anderson's trucking or something like that was the name of it, right? So my grand, my grandfather and his brothers, there was, there was a whole bunch of them. I think it was 13, she said it was 13, they had 13 kids. So it was a whole bunch of boys working for this company. And this is, you know, Southern Mississippi back in the middle of, of Jim Crow. So you already know whatever the, the, the white man in them called you, you would just, yo, okay, yes, sir, you know, all that type of stuff. So they would see him and be like, oh, that, that that's uh, Anderson's boy. That, that's Anderson's boy. Hey, oh, hey, boy. Hey, hey, Anderson boy. And they just, oh, okay. Instead of correcting them, like, no, my last name's Thompson. I just work, you know, they, oh, okay. And I guess it just stuck over years and years and years and years of them working for this Anderson trucking company and people calling them Anderson boys that it just stuck. So then when my grandfather started having children, it came Anderson. I'm like, yo, I'm like, so not only was our, our name, our African name taken from us during slavery, even after that, right? The 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 colonizer last name was taken and replaced with another colonizer. I'm like, yo. Now obviously right. that doesn't affect me because people used to take on the, the man's uh last name, which that that's still a white man's last name either way. But I'm just, I'm like, damn. I'm like, so we can't even, so we really can't <laughs> trace nothing back, like for real, for real. Like that ain't, I'm like, that was just a company. Like imagine, you know, I don't know what your occupation is or whatever, but imagine whatever company you work for, if, if that's, you know, 
let's say that's you know name after somebody and somebody told you that that's your last name and you had to just rock with it and now right. you're your chosen last name i'm like that is that is some shit. right like, i i didn't know nothing about i'm like and like, that was just i guess a common thing in mississippi back then which you know i believe it i'm like damn so we i'm like that was it i'm like so that's not even your that i mean thompson ain't her name either you know what i mean but i'm right. like so anderson ain't your name at all <laughs> She's like, no. Nah. And see, that's I'm what's like, yo. about that is trying to trace lineage back. I always tell black people, I believe we got a lot of cousins and we don't even know it. It's oh, man. Of, I mean, well, per, per, you know, on the plantation, having people be shipped any and everywhere, have their names changed. Uh, there was no genetic test or anything like that. We got a whole lot of cousins out here. We, a whole lot of us have family that I don't think we really even know about. It. I mean, you see Family Union t shirts and you'll see certain last names on it. But mm -hmm. you know, like you said, those last names, those are colonizer last names. In situations like that, what you're talking about, where you didn't pick the name and then had your name changed again, you can't even really <laughs> fully trace back based on your last name. You can't really accurately trace back your lineage as well. And that that just shows more of the mind fuck, the PTSD that you alluded to, more of the mind fuck that this country has subjected black people to. You don't even know who you really can to. Really. If you really think about it, we don't know who we really can to, or who we really connected to like that, or who, you know, who is really in our families. Um, and that's that just goes along the lines of more of this terrorism, more of this fear mongering that this uh, that these, the white man, his mama has put us through in this country. And it's complete. It's complete bullshit. But I like the conversations that's being had, even the one you have with your family, because you learn more talking to older people in your family, whether you still you, you got your parents alive, which are older, but people got grandparents. It's good to talk to your grandparents. You'll find out some crazy shit that these white motherfuckers done did that a lot of our families let ride because we didn't want problems. They didn't want problems. They didn't want to be in danger. They didn't want to be uh, subject to getting beat, hung, lynched, tarred, feathered, all the stuff that they would do to us. That was all fear mongering, all fear propaganda. And a lot of us let a lot of our parents and grandparents let shit ride just to keep themselves safe. And once you learn that stuff, it just it it. It'll make you mad, man. It makes me mad when I hear certain stories. My grandma, my, you know, great grandma done told me that shit pisses me the fuck off. Serious. Yeah, it's it's sad. I mean, my my oldest uncle, before uh, my family moved from Mississippi back in the fifties, he says a little boy uh, before he my oldest uncle's he's uh, passed away now, but before he did, he used to tell me he remembers seeing uh, just a slew of black men in suits hung. It's, it still happens in Mississippi today. I'm not trying to say that it was just then, but right. I mean, he remembers back then, like just seeing just just whole bunch of black men just you know suits uh, being hung, which I think is so crazy. You know, today we feel like we have to act a certain way or we have to dress a certain way to please them. When you look at these old photos of primarily black men being hung, just as an example, we were in business suits, either trying to get a job already had one or just that's just how we you know right. conducted ourselves in a way that was you know so-called presentable to the uh uh overall american society you know the white society here in america and we were still getting lit. right so you know and i'm not saying that we shouldn't that we shouldn't have a code of conduct but it should be on our own accord it shouldn't be based right. on well they say this is the way to be so right. that must be the way to be when we taught them everything <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's so it's like we we've been flipped so much we forget, you know, we're the ones that taught them everything that they know, but now we think in order to be considered of quality, we have to be like them when really they're being like us, whether that's from the past or that's now when it comes to you know so-called swag or just being cool. Right. What whatever it is, whatever time period, you know, they they always got their game from us black or excuse me, white white men and white women have gotten their game from uh uh, black men and black women. So I think, you know, just as, as pride, I'm kind of, I guess, going a little off, off the topic of this question, but as far as pride, we need to stop. But that's something that I had to learn <clears throat> as well. Um, even just, you know, you know, uh, you know I got to get my hair touched up or anything, but, <laughs> but even just have just me just growing my hair out is one, I, I just like having a longer hair. And two, for me, it's a statement saying, look, you know, I don't care what you think, whether it's me you know, getting a job or just, you know, having some type of white acceptance. That's something that I had to learn just, you know, being being younger and uh, usually having my hair cut short, which I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to have, you know, a fade. I'm not saying that that's right. me, means you're a coon. But I think, you know, just like you have a lot of black women who say, oh, I got to put on this this weave or whatever or this wig to get this job. 
you have a lot of black men who will say, oh, well, I had to have my hair clean cut in order to get this job. Right. You know, and I and I get that. I understand. You know, I mean, I've been I've been working shit for about 15 years now or something like that. I'm, I'm 28. I'll be 29 here in, uh, uh, next month. I mean, I've been working for about what? That's about half, yeah, half my life. Right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But I had to get to a point where I'm like, look, whether it's, you know, I've worked in, you know, blue collar and white collar uh, areas. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I got to a point where I'm like, look, if I'm going to be denied a job because of uh, I'm black or the way my hair is, that they ain't, they ain't the job for me. Right. <laughs> First of all, you know, and obviously we need to have our own, our own businesses more too. But, you know, whether it's a nine to five, your own business, whatever it is, we got to get off this mindset of, oh, well, I got to look this way to be accepted into the society. If you're doing that, they already got you. They're already controlling you. Right. You know, we we got to we got to really uh, uh, stop that, you know, and that that's something that I've just the older I've gotten, something that I've just kind of learned <clears throat> that I think is funny because I, you know, I have the, uh, I guess, natural job interview voice, uh, me having a Midwest accent. So just over, over, you know, the past with me, you know, on the phone, you know, trying to get a job and they'll call me up <clears throat> and, you know, and back in my mind I'm thinking like, damn, this, this is how it is for white folks. Like they, they just get, they really begin a job on a spot like this. They'll yeah. look at my resume and be like, man, you know, you ain't got a felony. You got, you know, 14, 15 years or whatever, a job experience, like, you know, all this different stuff, whoop woo everything sounds great. You know, we can talk to you real quick over the phone. They'll go email me, like, we talk to you on the phone real quick, right. just to kind of, you know, tie up some loose ends and you can start Monday. So I'm like, cool, call them up. Yo, my name is whoop de woo yada, yada. Okay, cool. Okay, all we need you to do is come in, uh, just sign a couple papers and you can start Monday. All right, thank you. Hang up, I show up, I'll be sitting. This has happened to me numerous times. I'll be sitting there chilling, just looking, you know, hair like this, everything chilling, waiting, you know, it's, you know, I got to show up and say at, at 11 o'clock, I get there at 1045. So I'm like, all right, you know, I got 15 minutes. I'm sitting down. I sign in a little secretary thing sitting there. They thing I know it's 1105. I'm, I'm going to, Hey, uh, ma'am, you know, or whoever secretary, you know, my name is such and such. I'm supposed to be for an interview meeting, such and such. Oh, uh, okay. Give me one second. They all look at me confused. Like, I'm like, Oh, shit, here we go. Right. You know, the lady will come out. You should be some white woman, you know, some white terrorist racist ass woman. They they looking and they all they be looking for all, like hey, was that I'm like, I'm like here we go I'm like, I'm like yep just I'm looking at them just smiling like yep it's me finally get in to the you know in the office they be like, oh shit they gotta look at me like Fuck, I got I got to think of something real quick oh you applied for the such and such job oh I'm sorry we actually just hired uh, somebody for that yesterday oh that's crazy I was on the phone with you yesterday and I mean everything seemed cool like what right. um I, are you sure that this is the job for you. Uh, yeah, that's why I apply for you. See my experience. What you mean? <laughs> oh, well, um, look, we'll, we'll call you back if something opens up. Um, I'm like, okay, thank you. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, like y'all, y'all thought I was white. I got a very, you know, white sounding last name. You know, my, the way I articulate myself, I have a very Iowa accent. Don't think that and they see me, you know, there's no way you can mistake me for anything other than a black man. They, they see me, they, they, Right. I'm like, what, what you gonna say? They can't be like, oh, well, you black, we can't hire you. They, it just, you know, but that's just a part of the game. But I don't, I don't that. I'm not like, oh man, let me cut my hair, let me, let me bleach my skin, and do, no, right. you know, I'm, I'm gonna stand out in the sun for a, a next five hours. In fact, I'm let me get dark on, on the ass. Like, no. <laughs> right. Like I, you know, what I'm saying, I, but that's something I think that we, like I said, part, part of that fear we have to get over. And I, I know it's hard because we all gotta eat, and we're all unfortunately. uh indoctrinated into this whole wage slavery, all of us really as Americans, unless you in that top 1%, you know, we're all indoctrinated into this uh, uh, wage slavery where we need a, a piece of paper in order to live, which I think is is the, the biggest Jedi mind trick between that white supremacy classism to me, which is their, their, their brother and sister, it's the same shit. Right. Our money ain't even backed by nothing. And we out here worrying about not getting a, a job from some racist white person to get a piece of paper so we can eat. We should be really growing our own shit, but that I, I can make a whole nother video about that too. But you know, it you know, it's just crazy how we think if we got conduct ourselves a certain way, we'll be accepted. And I was asked, accepted into what? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what like you if, if people can't accept you for who who you are, whether that's a friend, you know, a girlfriend, whatever, wh why why are you trying to impress them? I don't, you know, I, I've never, you know, people might people think when they when they say when they hear me speak that oh he's you know, I saw me white folks be, oh, so what do you think about Donald Trump? I'll go in on that, not yelling at him, but just 
spend that knowledge, man. They get so right. mad because they think that they got, they think that they got one. You know, they think they got one. Like, no, I'm not about to sit up here and coon up for you just, just so you can be my friend. Why, what, or what? <laughs> like, you don't fuck with me, so why should you know? But right. you know, we just got we got a lot of work to do on that front. But um, that actually kind of segues into the next question. I'm gonna go into that because I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep okay. I'm gonna keep rambling if I. <laughs> um, how many of our of our people uh, do you think can be uh, quote unquote saved mentally, <laughs> and how? <laughs> Man, how many? How many can be saved? Right. Well, um, as far as the can be saved, I, I do believe that I think at least half of us can be saved. Right. Can be. Because again, we're just dealing with can be. I think at least half of us, we're looking at about 25 million. I say about 25 million of us can be saved. Um, and, but want to be saved. And, and, and I guess the the hard part about your question is when you say saved black people don't feel like there's nothing wrong. So, you know, you have to first believe that there's something wrong in effort to put forth anything to wanting to be saved. Just like it almost reminds me of church when they have the altar call, you know, the pastor, he going to stand up there and say whatever the fuck he got to say. Does anybody want to come down and be baptized? People get up and they walk down, they walk down on their own, would be free will because they decide that they need to be saved. If black people, as far as the black power, the black uh, pro blacks, would do the same altar call, same one every week, every Sunday. We'll take we'll take uh, churches day. It won't be nobody walking down to the altar because black people don't feel like nothing's wrong. So that's the first, the hardest part about as far as saving us is for us to believe that there is any even anything wrong. Black people don't think nothing's wrong with what's going on out here. All black people want to do is turn up, party, uh, goddamn engage in celebrity worship and gossip. We don't think nothing's wrong. As long as we can pay our bills, we feel like everything is fine. Everything is completely fine. And that's one of the hardest things about even what would be saving black people is that black people don't believe that there's anything wrong. There ain't nothing going on. Me and you. We talking crazy. We creating racism. We we just angry black men. And this is two black people. We just hold tips too woke, you know, need to go somewhere and chill and have fun. Black people don't even see value in what we're doing. They don't even see value in the rhetoric that we're um, or the topics that we're discussing. They don't see value in that. They don't think that there's anything wrong. So therefore, they don't think they need to be saved. That makes them harder to save because they don't see anything wrong. And I think that's the main problem that we have is getting black people to decide that there's an actual problem going on, that there's an actual issue. Um, and that's what makes the number of people that can be saved. It's a high number, but I don't think it'll come to fruition because we don't see anything wrong. And I think that as parents, we're not raising our kids to see anything wrong with how society is set up uh, either. Um, a lot of us, and I don't know about you, but I can only speak for myself. A lot of us don't even see what's going on until we're older, until we up in our high twenties, early. But I said, "Shit, I, you supposed to be giving this to your child as soon as they learn how to talk and understand words. You should be schooling them as to what's going on out here and what situation they're in. Therefore, they'll know that they need to be quote unquote saved, or they need to be uh, actively trying to save themselves and save their own people. So that's what makes this that question is it's a tough one because I believe a lot of us can be saved." But do we want to be saved? No. Do we even think there is a situation to be saved from? No. Because as long as racism is getting better to black people, they winning. As long as white people letting them into their schools, integration was one of the biggest problems or the biggest, uh, 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 as far as us going back to sleep, integration was, it put us into a fucking slumber that we are still experiencing to this day because you got black people believing that we live in a post-racial America for whatever reason. But as long as they believe that it's almost OK, white people ain't spitting on them and, you know, hanging them up in uh, at town hall meetings and, you know, disrespecting black people in the most extreme ways in your face and black people. OK, we feel like we can, like you said earlier, dress better, talk better. As long as we can do those things, then we fine. And that's what makes that question so very difficult because we don't see anything wrong with what's going on out here in the world. We just want to blend in pay our bills and die.
and create more slaves. That's all we want to do in this world or in this life. And that's something that is a flaw. And that's because we're not getting the we're not getting those lessons at a young age. We're getting them late in life and then trying to convince me and you. We try to convince grown people that there's something wrong. Well, to me, if you're 30 years old and you don't see anything wrong out here, then you chose that. That's where you want to be. Therefore, you don't feel like you need to be saved. Therefore, you're going to continue to be lost because it's more comfortable for you to please white people than it is to confront white people about what the fuck going on in this society. And that's what we got to work on as far as saving black people is concerned. Hey, absolutely. I agree. Um, it's it's hard, too, because, you know, a lot of times you want you want to engage in, you know, so-called, quote unquote, waking people up. But like you said, you have to at least want to, even if you maybe don't know the right steps, if you at least are acknowledging there's a problem, then right. somebody can help you with the solution. But if you don't even believe, or like you said, people who say racism is getting better, which I, I never understood that. Like what <laughs> you hear people say, well, you know, rape is getting better. It ain't like back in the day where they used to, you know, uh, at least in Europe, you know, they would, uh, I mean, no, it's, they would, uh, you know, call a, a white woman a witch and then they would, uh, you know, drown her and she she survived she's a witch and they would rape her and kill her but then if she died they'd be like, oh shit, i guess she was a regular white woman i mean look it's not that it's not how it was back then so it's it raping and and all that stuff is getting better right Ooh, like that sounds like rape is getting okay. better either okay. you have rape or you don't or you don't <laughs> imagine imagine a president coming out and say that now one thing this is what's funny about this government this society too the government can come out here and say racism getting better no problem no outcry, no outrage, no nothing. Let a president get up on a podium and tell women to calm down. Rape is getting better. There'll be a goddamn national outcry because he done came out his mouth and said something so disrespectful. That's another thing we have to stop doing, too, is letting people mm -hmm. minimize our struggle, minimize the racism, minimize the institutional racism that's going on in this country. But a president will never, no politician will ever come out and say, Y'all women, calm down. Y'all acting too, y'all done got too high and mighty now. Y'all know damn well rape getting better. Man, that motherfucker be ran off the podium. <laughs> He'll be ran off the podium if he say that shit. But black people, as far as racism, this is the only crime. And to me, racism is a crime against oh, yeah. humanity. The only crime that can be downplayed, the only crime that can be disrespected and minimized, and no national outcry occurs. And this is down to even... Uh, brutality against animals will get hoisted up higher than racism. And racism is a huge crime against humanity. It's the only one that can be disrespected. And it's because our people allow that shit to happen without any type of outcry whatsoever. Yeah, save the trees, save the, the flea. Save you know. oh, <laughs> and armadillos can be saved before black people get saved. And that's oh, something yeah. we gonna have to do something about as, as to allowing this type of disrespect but without pride you allow disrespect without self-love you allow disrespect and it becomes okay because it is getting quote unquote better and that's the problem that we gonna have to we got to fix that amongst ourselves as a people we got to make these things important and we got to create the narratives you know you got michael vick out here that served time for his homeboys exactly. uh, uh dog fighting but george zimmerman and them out here kicking it but hey it's, it's getting better though so it's, it's all right <laughs> long, long as it's getting better, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh man, let me let me uh jump to the next question. Um besides the the black family, which I think we both can agree is the foundation and probably the overall uh most important part of uh just us as black people, blackness, the whole nine. But aside from that, um, what are some of the other areas that we need to improve on and how? Well, I think one of the main areas we need to improve on um, is maintaining a family structure, even if you not together. It's one of the things that we fail on as a people. Now, when the household, when I guess mom may leave, dad may leave, or they may not be together, all of a sudden there is no teamwork. The teamwork disappears. It becomes a situation where everybody wants to cause and inflict pain on the other person, which your black child is in the middle of. A lot of people use their children as well. A lot of black women doing that, using these kids against these men, against black men. But that whole you should still be able to work together. You should still be able to have the best interest of your child, your black child in particular. We talk about black children it at heart. That should be on the forefront. That should be on the very top forefront. But instead, 
what we have done is decided to indoctrinate our children with religion, which is something I think that we should also, we need to stop indoctrinating our children with religion because that is something that's tearing down the mentality of black people from a very early, early age. And it makes it hard for them to get information. So outside of the black family and keeping that family functioning as a family, um, even if the even if they don't live in the same household, step two is indoctrinating your children to be cowards, to wait on a savior, to uh, seek, as you alluded to earlier, to seek white acceptance. This this that mentality being passed down alone is destroying any progress that we can make as a people is because we're taking the cowards route. We're saying that things are getting better. So it's OK. So therefore, we teach that to our children. And they teach it to their children. It gets passed down that way. I think it is very important that we grab a hold of the uh, pro-black mentality of our children and raise our kids to be militant, raise ourselves to be militant and raise our children to be militant because there is no other option for us as a people at all. And because we don't do that, it leaves us, ourselves and our children included, open to acts of terrorism open to not only acts of terrorism, but being sabotaged, being used against your own people. You don't realize it. You spoke earlier about um, those movies that black women be playing in when they play that role. Well, if you mm-hmm. raise with a militant mindset, guess what role you don't take? You don't take that role because you're not going to depict your people that way. That's something we also, and but that is raised inside of a child. And we have to make sure that this is something that we stop looking over. We want to talk about, and I talk about this on my videos. We always want to talk about supporting black banks, supporting black businesses, building black infrastructure. You can't do any of that if you didn't raise your child with a militant mindset, with a black first mindset and with pride. Because if if you don't instill that pride, they have no reason to uh, reject certain roles in commercials, on movies, reject certain scripts. You know, that they're not even going to like, I'm not even doing that shit because it makes my people look bad. Motherfucker, you, your white ass going to have to do blackface to get somebody black to play that goddamn role. Because won't nobody black take that role. Instead of us complaining after the fact, well, look at how they depicted us in the movies. Well, a black person signed up to do that shit. And if there was no, you know, these coons out here that sign up to sell out the team, if they didn't exist in such a large number, then we would be intact better. But because that's not important, because the only thing that's important to us is teaching our kids to pray. When shit goes wrong, uh, read the Bible. Remember Bible verses. I, I had Bible verses memorized when I was coming up. I didn't have not one black code instilled in me. I knew the book of Psalms. I knew the book of Revelations. I knew, you know, I knew Bible verses. And I, and I was going to be in church on Wednesdays and Sundays. And if not Wednesdays, you most definitely going to be in there on Sundays. So I think that our mentality and in the indoctrination via <clears throat> religion is very, very problematic. And it's destroying the mentality of our people from a very early age. And we got to nip that shit in the bud. I mean, we could talk about, um, I, cause I do believe the black family is important, but mm-hmm. if the mentality of the parents ain't there, then just being black and together, that don't mean shit. I know that may sound crazy to some people, but just being black and together is one thing. Being pro black and instilling pro blackness into your children. That's a whole other thing. That's another thing that we aren't doing. And, and until we start doing that, we're not going to see, you know, people just being together ain't enough. You got to have some pride behind that shit to in order to change the mentality of your people. You have to have that pride there. And right now that is nowhere to be found. We want to yell about the black family. Well, if you got two coon parents that's together, they might have been married their whole life. That's beautiful. They got the family pictures and everything. They stayed together their whole life. But if they coons, their kids probably going to be coons, too. In which case, the black family didn't do shit in that situation, but raise another coon. And that's what we're going to have to make it uh, not only just about optics, because, again, they're making the black family about optics and about financial security. And that those things are fine. But we are in a situation where me and you are having to convince grown black people to love themselves. And that ain't our job. That was a mom and daddy's job. That ain't our job. And that's something that we're going to have to look at uh, as we deal with, as we're trying to come to grips with the reality that we're living in. And as we're trying to wake people up, we have to deal with the fact that it's not me and your job to be waking up a 30 year old grown woman, 30 year old grown man. That was the job of his parents. He should have been woke since he was damn 10 years old. If you ask me, five years old, 
You know, that should have been something he had inside of him, raised in him. And that's what we're not focused on. I think that until we focus on that, we're going to continue to have kids, raise them as coons, and then wonder where all our, our, our soldiers at. Why ain't nobody protecting black women? Well, you didn't raise your kids to protect black women. That's why. Why you, Why does black woman got all this weave in? Well, you didn't raise her to not wear weave. What's she supposed to do? Why does black man a colorist? You didn't raise him to not be a colorist. So what the fuck is he supposed to do? You trying to tell him at 30 what he's supposed to do. He ain't hearing this shit because he's 30 years old now. So until we take more of a serious, a very serious look and a very serious approach to the mentality of our children and the mentality of the parents that's raising these children, we're going to continue to have these same damn problems, continuing to beg black. We, we shouldn't have to beg black people to support black business. That's the most logical thing we could do. But you got to beg black people to support them. You got to try to convict them, guilt them into supporting black businesses. But if you was raised on that, you wouldn't nobody have to convince you. You'd already be doing it. So we're going to have to take a real strong look at what we teach our kids, the values we teach them, which is uh, please white people, put on the right clothes for them, talk right for them. Pray to Jesus that they love you oh, every week. Make sure you pray to Jesus. If you need something, pray religion. This is the stuff we teaching our kids. We got to change our motherfucking playbook as to what we indoctrinate our kids with. My favorite team is the Washington Redskins. Guess what? Guess what gets passed down? My kids favorite team would probably be the Washington Redskins, too. We pass certain things down, but we don't pass the right things down. And that's what we're going to have to work on as a people in general. Or we're going to be here. Another two decades going to go down the line and we still going to be telling black people that they should support black businesses before Gucci has a blackface scandal. You should have been supporting black businesses. You shouldn't be doing it as a reactionary thing, as an emotional thing. That should have been what you were doing and that should have been raising you since you was a child. And until we deal with that, we going to be here. Me and you going to be sitting on fucking social media people like us trying to convince black people that loving themselves is the only logical thing that they could do. Hey, straight facts. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it sounds it sound like basically what you're saying is it's more about uh, the mentality and a code of conduct versus yeah. just, you know, uh, two bad people getting together and creating another human being, right. which is important because obviously yeah. nobody's creating then, you know, where we're going to be. You can't have any leaders if nobody if a leader isn't born, right. but it's more than just giving birth and then just being like, all right, well, be like that white person over, you know. Or yeah. whatever the case may be but right. uh in which i yeah I, I agree to that a, a thousand percent you know i think a lot of i think a lot of it uh too just to kind of add, uh, add on what you were saying we as uh black men and black women need to look at these relationships more as a business and not just trying to copy what you know what we see you know let's say a jay-z and a beyonce shows us on you know tv or just i'm, I'm just using that example whatever and we see all this nice stuff, which is good. I mean, obviously you should be happy. I'm not saying that feelings and emotions aren't important in a relationship. Of course, you should love the woman that you're with. You know, she should love the man that she's with, of course, but it should be more than just, well, I like her and she likes me. So now we're fucking and I'm, I'm paying the, the rent and she's buying the groceries and cooking or, you know, whatever, you know, right. whatever y'all do, it should be a, a, uh, business there should be a business aspect to it too mentally and as far as you know uh how, how you're you know conducting your, your day-to-day re re relationship it should be looked at like like, like you're making a business like, like y'all just open up a store together and y'all you know what i'm saying it should be the yeah. same type of you know i, I honestly i think if uh, you know as far as you know black men and, and women getting together and making church things like that if you look at that person you don't feel like Y'all can actually have a for real business together, whether y'all make one or not. You know, I think more of us should do that as far as the, the, the entrepreneur side that we need to do better on. But if you could look at that person like, dang, I can't see myself, you know, if I was working with her, if I was working with him or if we created our own business together, that shit would probably tank. Not because, you know, you know, uh, from the financial side, but just we probably wouldn't mesh together. I don't think y'all should be together just because. You know, she might get some some good head, or you know, you know, whatever the case may be. That's cool. You know, what I'm saying y'all can do that, but I think that's when feelings can be problematic because if we get caught up. Oh man, the way that girl throw it back, man, I can't, I can't, I can't throw that away. I can't pass that up, man. I, I never had a girl uh, ride me like that before, or you know, she might be thinking like, man, I never had to do put it down like that. I can't pass this up. Well, you don't have to, 
but our emotions get in the way and then we get jealous that that person is talking to somebody else like no you're with me you can only be with me and we think oh well, that's love that's possession in right. my opinion yeah. that's not love but then you know a kid comes into the play and you, the people want to be responsible which is good y'all want to stay together for the kid which i think is good but like you said if you're in an unhealthy uh black household as far as raising that kid up to be uh, uh indoctrinated into white supremacy then what what are you doing you're just right. creating another you know, uh, uh, Diamond and Silk, or who's who's uh, Trump's boy? What's his name? You're talking about uh, black man. Uh, David she, Clark. Is that his name? No, or one of them. It don't, it don't matter. One of them. One of them. Know, it's, it's so sure. Sure. So, right, way. sure. We'll, we'll go with that. You know, right. you're basically raising another Clark, another Diamond and Silk, or uh, what's the Candace? All oh, you, you know, right. Kanye. Any of these type of folks. You know, right. that's all you're doing. You know, and of course, like you said, if they want to be saved, whether they're 30, 40 years old, they that it's, it's still possible for them to be saved, but they should already have at least some sort of understanding at, you know, like you said, by the time they can talk, they shouldn't be, the first word shouldn't be coon coon, it should be, you know, black pride or something like this, right, you know, right. and we definitely need to, and in me, just speaking, is just as myself, somebody that does not have, you know, I don't have my own family, I don't have any uh, uh, children, um, but uh, a few years ago, I, I just decided to um, uh, volunteer in the uh, Big Brother Big Sister program to try to you know help out some of these young uh, black boys in in my area and things like this. Just you know, e even though I'm not saying that's going to change the world, but I'm thinking like, dang, I can do something. Right. You know, what I mean, I might not have a son or a daughter on my own uh, at this time, but you know, when if that happens, that'll happen at that time. That doesn't mean I gotta wait until I have my own child to uh, uh, you know, start this. I mean, I can at least try with some of these uh, black boys that are in my community that are you know, uh, teenagers and things like this. And I can say, I've been doing this for the last few years. You know, First kid that I mentored, he was uh, from, from Africa. So I mean, whether it's black Americans, whether it's black people in Africa, where, wherever it is, it's black people, we go through a lot of the same struggles and a lot of these kids do need help, whether it's their parents being coons or them just not having, uh, or them not having uh, uh, parents, you know, right. some of these kids might be foster kids or, you know, the kid I, I mentor now, you know, not, I mean, not to get all into it, but just, just, you know, just like, you know, what was it like a two or a third or two thirds of black, black people in America, you know, we grow up without a father, you know, he's from Gary, Indiana, same, same old story. I'm not going to, I can't get too much into it. You know, that's right. Anyway, same, same old story. You know what I mean? So, you know, he kind of looks to me as his big brother, as that older male figure, which is something that I'm not used to because I'm, I'm I'm the youngest in my family. But I'm like, well, dang, I'm going to be 30 next year. You know, I am a grown man. I am at that father age. At the very least, I can be a big brother to some of these younger uh, uh, black boys. So they at least have something to look forward to. I'm not saying I'm the greatest uh, man in the world. I'm not saying every black boy should copy me. I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, better myself. But I can at least give them a foundation you know, or if he has has any questions, whether it be, you know, he asks me all the time, you know, why these white folks act so weird, <laughs> you know, because he's from Gary. He ain't used to right. being around all these white people in Iowa. So he look asking me, man, why do they, you know, or just it's something as silly as that or just just, you know, me teaching about the history, me trying to teach him what's going on now as much as I can without overloading him. But he, he'll be 15 this month. So, you know, I, I try to give him as much knowledge as I can without, you know, just overload his psyche because he hasn't really gotten you know any of this from from his mother things like this you know just once again same old story you know mom has to work 18 jobs to to make ends meet all all these things which you know shout out to any mother that can do and i'm not trying to take away from that but there's only so much one person can do right so like you said even if you know y'all don't work together as boyfriend girlfriend husband and wife or whatever y'all need to figure something out for for, for these children yeah. You know, what I mean, otherwise you shouldn't be having kids, in my, in my opinion, if you if you don't know how to instill that type of knowledge in, in your kids, if you just, you know, fucking to be fucking. I'm not saying don't do it, but you either need to get get your tubes tied, you need to wrap it up, you need to do something to right. try to not have kids. I think that that's very selfish. People tell me I get told all the time that I'm selfish for, you know, doing my best to not have a child until I feel that I'm ready. People say, oh, well, you're being selfish. I'm like, how's that being selfish? If, if I was selfish, I would just have a kid. I, I could have been, I could have had a kid 10 years ago if I right. wanted to. That's selfish, but I'm just saying, oh, let me just have a kid because I just want to have a kid. Now this life is here that did not choose to be here. 
in this world, in this household that, you know, I may, I may not be prepared for here. The baby may not, you know what I'm saying? That, that, I mean, that that's not fair to that child. Like, like, why would you do, I mean, this is just any, I'm not talking about anybody right. watching. Like, this is just in general. Why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? And we don't, we don't vet, you know, our, uh, uh, potential significant other when we're going through the dating process. That's what dating's supposed to be, is a vetting process. You right. know, some women think I'm crazy because I'll ask them, you know, questions just about, you know, you know, their blackness and their black pride and just, you know, what they think about what's going on. And, and if, you know, they're giving me that, that, you know, idea that they don't either care or they just don't know and they're not willing to want to to want to know, like you said, they're not, they don't want to be saved, right. or whatever the case may be, not to quote J. Cole, but you know, sometimes you, you just can't save her. If you don't right. want to be saved, don't save her. Right. But you know, if they're not on that mindset, I don't care how, I don't care how fine, I don't care how fat that ass is. Sometimes you got to try. And I know as a, as a man, as, as I think we both probably agree as black men, sometimes that's hard. We looking at something, like, hey, you, know, you know, but I'll be, I'll be, you know, whether it's through social media, whether, you know, in person, whatever it is, I'm talking to, a black woman that I, I can maybe see as somebody potentially that I want to be with, I'm going to be hitting them with, the, with these types of real questions. That I want to have these real conversations. And if you aren't up to a certain speed, then I'm sorry. And look, and I want the same energy back on my end. If they feel like, okay, this dude ain't quite, you know, mentally where I, you know, I want, you know, my potential husband to be, you know, that, you know, that's what she feels as a black woman. Cool. I get, I'm not, there's no hard feelings. I'm like, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to upgrade myself. But we got to be at least some type of, you know, right. commonality. If you, you know, over here, you know, love of hip hop is your uh, uh, gospel. Right. You know, I can't fuck with you. You know, I don't care how fine you look. You always going to be beautiful. And that's no disrespect to black women, anybody. But I think we we uh, take for granted the mind too much when it comes to so-called dating. We just, you know, if the sex is good and we like eating together, and you know the man's you know paying the bills or whatever you know right. working you know you're bringing in money she's bringing in money we good those things are all important but what does that mind do we don't right. care about that type of stuff as men and women and like you said you bring a child into, into the uh to the mix now what now he's got three coons living in the same house exactly. <laughs> you know <laughs> so exactly. yeah because yeah like I'm, I'm sure you probably go through that too just you know, maybe your experiences just throughout your life dating or whatever. I'm some some women probably think you crazy. Some of yeah. the things that you probably told them, I'm I'm sure I could imagine. Yes. You know, because I've definitely gone through it. And it's just like, how am I, dog? Just as an example, a few years ago, uh, beautiful uh, uh, darker skin or so-called dark skin, which I, I, I we we gotta stop saying that. You gotta stop. Uh, saying that. I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> Once again, I got killer cool within me too. But something that that you said actually in one of your videos, I think a couple of weeks ago about you know, we'll say our lips are too big or that we even have big lips. And I think, so, I, I believe it, you you said something along the lines of like, yeah. compared to who, like how, like our lips are big compared to what, what, what standard? Maybe their lips are too small. Maybe yeah. their lips are too, are too thin. How, yeah. how are our lips? I'm, I'm like, damn, like we do say we have big lips or that we have a wide nose. You know, why isn't that just regular? Seeing as most people in the world look like us, why, why isn't that the standard? Why isn't everybody else's shit you know, too thin, and that's no diss to black people that have you know thinner lips or thinner. No, I mean my lips aren't you know right. You know Jay Z and them and all like that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you know why do we say these type of things? Even I, I just caught myself saying a darker skinned woman or a dark skin. It's like you know she's black, but she's right. of a darker complexion than than I am. I'll say it like that. You know what I'm saying? And she she had she this is a few years ago. And this one this particular woman, black woman, she identified as a feminist, which you know I'm like whatever, you know. To me, it's all just words. You know, it's more so about the ex ex execution. You know, I I don't identify with that bullshit. Obviously, I do believe in equality and I you know respect for men and women. But I think the whole feminist movement to me is complete bullshit. I made a separate video about that. People can go check it out if they want to. But she identifies that. I never checked her on it. I was like, whatever. Let's just I'm gonna just keep with this black pride and see where she's at with that. And she was cool. She was like, she I mean, you know, talk was police brutality or whatever. We just you know chopping up all this stuff. I'm like, damn, this girl looks good she got her natural hair you know she's not turned off by me talking about you know our prize as black people i'm like damn i'm like, okay like you know shit, let's let's go out you know what i mean went out a few times everything's cool and then one day on uh facebook she posted something saying if you're a man and you don't identify as a feminist 
you're a part of the problem. And I said, isn't it more important as far as the execution and the action versus what you label yourself as? Because right. I could label myself as a, a, a billionaire. Guess what? <laughs> I ain't Oprah Winfrey. I right. don't want to be mentally, but I, I don't got o Oprah's money. I wish I did, but I ain't got Oprah's money. I don't got, you know, I'm not Mansa Musa out of this motherfucker, but I can say that I'm rich. I can say that all day. I can say I owe money or whatever. You know, I can say I'm wealthy. You know, I can say anything. I can say that I drive a goddamn Ferrari. Right. I have a Honda Civic. That ain't no goddamn Ferrari. <laughs> I'm proud of my car. I pay on that motherfucker, but that ain't no, that ain't no Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? I can say right. that. And I told her, I was like, what, I'm like, what does it matter so much if, so, if somebody says they identify as a feminist? They could just be just talking some fly shit. It should be more so about their day to day life and actions and what, and what they do for themselves and for their people. And then I and th this is where she she got turned off. And I said, on top of that, the feminist movement was created by white supremacist female. I talked about Margaret Sanger and just uh, uh, Susan B. Now I'm sorry, breaking all this stuff. That's all on Facebook. Started breaking all this stuff down to the history of feminism, how that was created um, from white society with white women being with their men, so nothing to do with us. Right. We got indoctrinated in, that to the, in the second wave of feminism, right around the civil rights movement, all that type of stuff. They use that to defy, divide us, yada, yada. You, you know the whole thing. So I broke all this stuff down. And, I, and I'm thinking I wasn't saying nothing crazy. I was just speaking the truth, right? So I said that, and there's a bunch of other, other people in there was commenting, and she was liking their comments and responding to them. I said all that type of stuff, right? Then this would say nothing, nothing to me. Didn't like my comment, which you know, whatever. Then this uh this corny looking white dude right below me, right, comments basically said the exact same thing I did, just left out that uh femi the feminist movement was founded by white supremacists. He talked about the he said the part about how it should be more about your actions and not you just identifying to something, right? Right. She 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 loved his comments, like, oh, that's so true, all this shit. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I messaged her privately because once again, I'm all about respect, especially for you know our people. I, I don't try to be like, what the fuck, bitch, what the fuck, nigga, what hardcore come you? It's like, wait, okay, let maybe we just got off on a misunderstanding or whatever, you know, it's Facebook, you know. So like, let me just holler at her one to one. And I was like, yo, if I happen to say something that maybe we got misconstrued or was looked at disrespectful, first of all, I just want to apologize it's out of respect. Not that I think I did say anything wrong. But I apologize if you thought I said something wrong, you know, right? Yada yada. Like, can we have a conversation about about the, the, your post about so feminism things? I feel like maybe we got off, you know, now, you know, eye to eye. She said, no, it's fine. You know, you have you, you know, you have your own opinion. That that's cool, you know. And she's like, honestly, you know, I think that, that you're a very uh, charming guy, anything like that. But I think that we should, you know, just kind of basically not, you know, kick, kick it no more. We should not fuck with each other no more. Which that's her family. Like, okay, I was like, can I ask why? She's like, oh, well, I just feel like you're a little too pro-black for me. Mm. I'm like, hmm. Once again, this is a woman who is, right. you know, a little more melanated than me. Beautiful, like you were saying, how just because they they rock natural hair, that doesn't necessarily mean that mentally that that they they're, they're right. you know right. on the team all the time. And she was saying that. And once again, I wasn't. I was just like, okay. And I was like, so what exactly was? The, I'm like, first of all, how can you be too pro-black? And second of all, where where were we? You know where where were we mi mismatched? Like what's going on? She's like, oh, I just feel like you make everything about race. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm an unapologetically black woman. This is you know her talking. I'm an unapologetically black woman. But I feel like you make everything about race. I'm like, hmm. Literally, I was just like, okay. I'm like, I ain't even no, ain't no point. Exactly. Uh, I ain't got the energy, and it's unfortunate. I mean, I feel bad. I mean, we and this was years ago. I mean, we we cool now, but. You know, we we just you know, but if I see her out, I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, it's still all black love. I'm just like, man, you know, you fast forward, you know, a little time after that, started dating this white dude. I'm like, mm. <laughs> right. Mm. Oh, okay. That she ain't got to worry about that pro pro black shit no more. Yeah, I'm like, man. But funny thing is, uh, um, recently, I think. Her and her white boy was going, has been going through some shit or something. I don't know. Like she deleted this dude's pictures off her social media. So I was like, damn. And the last few times that I had seen this girl out, she was all hugging up on me and oh, tell her friends, oh, this is one of the, the best guys that I know and all this. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, you know, and I, and I didn't know because I don't get people's business like that. Like it's at the time, I'm just like, damn, why? Is she, you know, she got a man. And I respect people that are in relationships, so I, I'm trying my best not to 
try, try, try to put any, any any type of game on her. So I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. you know, I think you're cool too, whatever, whatever. All right, you know. She just every time I just oh just I mean I could be in the, I'll be in the middle of talking to to somebody and she would just jump right in the middle and just hug it up on me. I'm like damn like I'm like okay like what's, you know and I would see uh, her man or so at the time I thought you know they were still together. I'm like hey what's up man he oh hey what the fuck like like kind of mean mugging me and shit. I'm like damn last time I saw this dude he was all cool with me and now it's like he kind of mean mugging. And I go on on social media I see that they. Both had deleted their photos. I'm like, oh shit. Right. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm too pro black for you. So don't don't pull this shit. Like it's still all love, but don't just cause that that white boy done probably did, did some fucked up shit. Now all of a sudden she don't realize. Right. I'm like, hey, look, I still got love for you, or we still be cool. Like I ain't gonna, you know, talk crazy to you, but I'm like, don't don't tell me I'm too pro black. I'm speaking the truth about something that you're your white friends told you was was the shit, which is feminism. You mad at me, but I'm like, I'm, you know, but you know, these are type of things that you know when it, when it comes at least to me as a black man. When it comes to dating, I, I I hold that to a high regard. You know, it's not just you know what 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 her what her ass is like or you know what her shape is like, or, which you know, don't get me wrong, like, you know, like I'm black man just like you, of course, you know, right. right. There's there's some importance to, to that. You know, I'm not trying to. Be with no woman built like Taylor Swift or somebody. No right. offense, I'm just saying. Right. You know, we all have, have our preferences. But she could be the baddest woman in the world physically. But if she's talking about you two pro black, well, shit, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the man for you. Right. Simple as that. You know, like if you know, I couldn't so stuff having a kid with a woman like that because we're gonna be fighting every single day when it comes to that child and how we're gonna raise them. You know, there's other women that I've tried to date who were really, really, really religious, and I mean, you had you know, full blown. You know arguments i'm just like man like why like why does this have to be so hard you know it's like I, I can't see myself settling down with somebody who i gotta fight with you every day about whether or not our kids going to church or whether or not i should teach them about malcolm x and Mar marcus garvey and the black panther movement and, you know like I, that shouldn't that we should already be in the same right. mindset if we're not you know we could be cool like we still have respect but i'm not gonna just fuck you because you, you look good right. and now we got this problem, you know what I'm saying? Now the kids confused, like, am I supposed to be a Christian? Am I not? Are the Black Panthers terrorists? Or are they not? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want, I could, I would not want to do that to any black child. I, that, like, that's, you know, one of those, that's one of those things to me where it's like, I could not see myself doing that. That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? They didn't, they didn't choose to be, none of us cho chose to be here. The parents can choose how they raise us. So like you, like you were, you know, saying, but you know, some folks, they don't get it. They think that, oh, well, you're being, to this, you're being too that. It's, I'm not being too nothing other than, you know, I think people aren't being a, enough of <laughs> pro black, you know what I mean? But, you know, and that, that I'm not trying to shit on black women. Like, I, most relationships I have black women are cool. I'm just, those are just some examples of, you know, us not seeing eye to eye and how uh, people can get messed up in the game and have children with people that you're not on the same ideology with. And now you just, you're, you're raising a kid that's confused, you know? Right. Right. We, we can't that we can't be doing that stuff. But that's what we're, that's um, what most of us are doing, though. And that's what we mm -hmm. got. That's why I do feel as though, like, like you're saying, that, that shit's important, man. That's the stuff we keep looking over. I mean, optic wise, that girl that you're talking about can get her a black man. It's not as pro black as you. They can have a kid and the optics look good. Black mm -hmm. look, black woman, black man, black child. But she told you you was too pro black already. So there's a good chance she got her one that wasn't so pro black. And the optics look good, but when it comes to the mind of their child, it's gonna be a problem. And that's why that's why that's what that's what my focus is now. That's all I'm all I'm drilling in home in on is I don't care what the structure is, married, not married, one household, two household, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. What are y'all teaching this black child? What example are you setting for your black child as far as pride is concerned, as far as knowledge is concerned? What are you doing as far as that's concerned? I think that's everything. That's something that we've been skipping. We, we've been looking over this shit. I'm not, I'm I'm dealing with it now, but nobody deals with that shit at all. Everybody wants this black love to just be black people together. That ain't doing shit for us. We've been together. We've been fucking and having kids. That ain't shit. What about the mentality of this child? And I think that, that we need to stop skipping that over that because that's why we having a problem with these grown folk like we have. It. Um, and that's we got to deal with that. We have to deal with that at some point. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, it's and it's it's a tough thing, but 
Um, I, I don't speak on that. I don't speak on that too much in my channel as far as raising children because I don't have any of my own, but at least on the the relationship aspect of black men and black women, I think that's something at the very least we can talk about more because that's what leads to children. You know, I, I don't know what's like to raise a kid, but you know, I do you have to I know exactly what it's like, and you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. You'll just have arguments about ideology. That's what you'll end up doing because I can't do it, man. <laughs> Cow rearing, you'll have arguments about ideology all the time. That's what it'll be. And so you're very, very accurate. Even though you haven't raised a kid, I done raised. Well, I'm in the process of raising. Mm -hmm. You'll just argue about ideology. That's what y'all end up arguing about. Whether somebody want to be, like you said, in church or not church or, you know, Black Panthers being not a non-racist, non-terrorist organization, like the media will try to portray them as. You'll have those arguments and they will be constant. And you are you are very right about that. You very right. But when we talk about the amount of woke black people, that means that the amount of black babies born would significantly decrease because ain't that many quote, unquote, <laughs> black people to begin with. So that's what makes it a very difficult thing is, you know, having to almost abstain because if you have the requirements that you have in now, I'm not ragging on black women either. And black women can say the same thing about black men. All black men want to talk about is sport. <laughs> and oh, absolutely, absolutely. Shit. So we we gotta work on that, man. We gotta make our we gotta raise our standards as far as the mentality is concerned. Um, and, and before we bring kids into the situation, we have to do that work. Absolutely. All right, let me get to the last uh okay. question. I got I got about uh 15, 20 minutes left for I gotta okay. With the uh, see um. Do you think, um, as far as black men and black women, like black, black I guess you could say, uh, um, generational black Americans or a ADOS, however you want to look at it, um, men and women, uh, if do you think that ADOS black men and women preferring uh, black people of other nationalities or other cultures is a form of self hate? Uh, why or why not? Well, see. I, I don't because my mentality is more so we black and I don't give a damn if you're in South America. I don't give a damn if you're in Africa. I don't care where you come from. We black. But the, the hard part is as per, just like what you was just talking about. What's the ideology about? Because if you just because you are an American ADOS doesn't mean that you have a would be pro black, full blown pro black mentality. We know you're for reparations, but that ain't enough for me. I don't know about anybody else's standards, but just being pro reparations is not enough. And a person that's from another culture, um, I don't think that's necessarily anti-black. It just depends on when the two people come together. What pro-black ideologies do y'all share? And it's all to me. That's what it's all about. I, I damn sure I can't call somebody that's with somebody black from the Caribbean islands a coon just because they're with somebody from the Caribbean islands. Like I, I, I'm not going to ever do that. I can't ever see myself doing that. So I do believe that it's all about ideology. Um, just the way the same way that you were just speaking of that, that that makes up everything to me. It's about ideology. I don't give a fuck where a black person is from, because in my mind, I don't have the uh, ADOS. I don't share that mentality as far as separating black people. I'm more of a, uh, of a, on a pan African mindset when it comes to black people, regardless of where you are. You can be a coon in Ghana or you can be a coon in goddamn Iowa. It doesn't really matter to me where you come from. If you have the right mentality to me, that's what matters. Um, per your actions as per what you see is important for black people to move forward in the world because we look at America all the time and we isolate a lot of things to America but black people are being oppressed all over the world so if you in Africa you don't see that if you not if you in England you don't see that I don't give a damn if you live in Australia and you don't see that then you still a goddamn coon to me you're a coon with an Australian accent you're a coon with a British accent you're a coon with an African accent but you're still a goddamn coon, in my opinion. So therefore, it wouldn't matter where you came from if you still have the same coon ass mentality and you don't see how your people are being oppressed all over the world. Then, you know, they ain't, ain't shit jumping anyway. We ain't got nothing too much to talk about anyway. We're just going to be arguing all the time. That's all that's going to happen. And I don't got time for that shit. So it really comes down to ideology. I don't really care about where a black person's body is. I care about where their mind is. That's what's most important to me. Absolutely. To me, that's the you know, people trying to do this whole. I, I don't know what it is with with just human beings in general. We always got to make a beef out of something. But I'm sure you've seen the whole thing with, you know, ADOS verse, versus 
Pan Africanism. I'm like, yeah. oh, here we go. And I and I've watched you know those videos more so just to get because I, I like to get people's uh, perspectives on things because right. they might tell me something like, dang, I didn't think about it that way. But the whole versus thing is just like, ah, damn, here we go. But in my opinion, I think that's you know, uh, as far as the whole Pan African thing, to me that makes sense because you have people that say, oh well, you know, black black Americans you know, are basically one race and then black Caribbeans are not like trying to act like we're different races, all type of stuff. It's like, fam, you know, we're, we're one family. Like you said like black people are everywhere. We go through the same type of struggles, whether it's, yeah, whether it's in, in the Congo, whether it's here in the United States, whether it's in Haiti, whether it's in, you know, whatever it is, we're going through very similar types of struggles, whether it's sex trafficking in Africa or over here in North America, like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and that is considered to be more of a pan-African pan ideology and i agree with uh that aspect of pan-africanism that you know we should be lo look at ourselves as one family maybe we live in different rooms but right. we in the same house right. you know what i'm saying and the, these motherfuckers outside keep trying to burn our house down right you know so what are we doing we over here well you know uh your house is a little bigger than mine so or well hold up i guess it's like what like fam <laughs> like we right. in this you know, because you you mad because you living in the attics versus in the basement. This person's you know in the whatever you know whatever. Just right. It, it does. We live in the same house. We going through the same shit, paying the same bills <laughs> to the same white supremacist motherfucker, or right. as you say, the white man is mama. <laughs> you know right. exactly. You know it's just like come on, man. Like you know, but um, in my opinion though, I will say if you are just for example, you know, a black American who says they prefer, let's say. You know, uh, Caribbean women. You know, you're like I said, as a Black American man, let's say that, and you're shitting on Black American women and saying, "Oh, like you know, I only yeah. mess with Dominic Black Dominican women or whatever." You know, like fuck these Black American chicks. And you know, you're a Black American man. To me, that's weird. And in my opinion, that's a form of self hate. The same way with uh, colorism. I mean, that's basically another form of colorism. Basically. Right, right, right. In my opinion, that's, that's but, more would be cultureism in that situation that you're giving. Right. I think I would call that cultureism because it, it's still, you know, you're still putting another group of women over your own women, and I don't think that should be happening at, at all in any type of way. Yeah, it's one of them isms, man. I mean, we just, we just so many of them. I just, you know, so many of them. I, just, <laughs> I never even heard of cultureism before. I just made that one up just now. So it, it that's, I mean, it probably is a real thing. You know, I mean, you got all these different, you know, cultures of black people. So you know, I mean, even really here in America, you know, you got you know southern culture, you got north, you got east, you got west. You know, you know. So it's, you know, but it's like my thing is like, look, if you black and you're for the team, like you said, it doesn't matter what part of earth you're from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you know, it's, it's all the same, but um, let me jump to this uh, last question. Oh, real quick too, before I get to the last question, uh, shout out to everybody who's been commenting. I know I haven't really been acknowledging y'all or commenting back. I'm trying to pay attention to uh, Rob and just, you know, trying to get this conversation going and put some kind of new to this whole live stream thing, but shout out to the people in here. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm new. Um, uh, in this community, anything like that. So, I mean, whether it's one person or one million, I really do appreciate it. Um, that everybody that's here. Um, if, if for any reasons y'all don't know about Rob and you do now, go sub to him. If, if you don't, I'm, I'm sure everybody here probably does know about Rob. I know some of your names I, I, I do recognize. I know some of y'all are sub to me. So for those of you that are sub to me and aren't sub to him, go sub to <laughs> go do that. I have a shout out video I made uh, a couple months ago, uh, so go check that video out too if you want to. People want to check out um, some other YouTubers in the community that I respect as well as Rob, but uh, definitely stuff to his uh, channel. I put a link in the description to uh, your live channel. I believe that's your main channel, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, okay, I'm doing my live. Okay, I, yeah. I put a link. I put a link in there. So I think how many how many people I got? And I got I got three. It says in here right now. I don't know what the uh, if that was the peak or what. Um, but I mean, all three of y'all, you know, hey, that's that's three more people. If y'all ain't sub to him for real, uh, this dude, uh, about, I, at least at least once a week, you drop a video. So, I, you know, definitely uh, check his channel out if, if you uh, haven't. But uh, let me go ahead and get this uh, last question knocked out. Um, I see I also <laughs> misspelled something here too. Hey, once hey, human beings, you know, we ain't perfect. Um, what's the ideal family structure uh, for our children? In your opinion, which I know we kind of talked about this already, but right. in your opinion, as far as you know, two parents, men and women, one parent, man or woman, or which I kind of threw this in just to spice things up, 
I think I kind of know your opinion about this part, but uh, or two men and two women, like <laughs> <laughs> what is the ideal black family uh, structure in your opinion? <laughs> this is the last question. I I I'd throw some in there just to you know put, well, a, put a little flavor to it. The, the ideal family structure is of course going to be one heterosexual, always heterosexual black man, uh, and a uh, one heterosexual, always heterosexual black woman. Because I know we we doing a lot of this taking break shit now too, where you have a dude to go off, fuck some dudes, come back, woman go eat some pussy, shit, come back. That's <laughs> I want to talk about all the time heterosexual, functional, one household. That's the ideal situation. That's the ideal situation. Um, but again, I do believe that even if you're not in the ideal situation, you should still put raising your child pro-black militant. That should be first and foremost. I don't give a damn if daddy moved to goddamn Kansas, mama lives somewhere. I don't care where the, the bodies are. That still should be the main focus regardless. But ideally, of course, you're dealing with one, uh, two parent household because it help, it allows you to be uh, more hands on. You're there for everything. You're not getting reports on things. Um, I have children who don't live in my household and I get reports. Now I do happen to spend more time with my kids and a lot of um, non-custodial fathers do. So I get to see a lot of things, but you, you won't be getting reports. You're actually seeing what's going on as, as opposed to getting reports. So it allows you to be more active um, right there on the spot as per uh, certain behavioral things that need to be dealt with as far as discipline, discipline is concerned. Um, but the ideal is a two parent household, a functional two parent household, a non abusive two parent household uh, where nobody's, you know, on drugs or having any type of, you know, no, no abuse going on. So a functional, healthy, Two parent, um, always heterosexual, pro black militant um, mindset household. That's that's the ideal um, situation for a black child to be raised in, in my opinion. Yeah, hey, I agree. And um, just on just for me, not speaking for Rob, but just for me, you know, obviously, if you are a, a bisexual, homosexual, or whatever the case may be, and if that really is you. You know, as a black person, if you are black first, you know, obviously you are still part of the team. It's not that oh, I'm, I'm not one of those people trying to devise. Oh, well, if you're gay, you know, go somewhere there. No, you black, you're black. It does, you know, that doesn't matter. You know, obviously, if you are somebody who really is homosexual, you know, you can't help that. That you know, that's what you're attracted to. Fine, but a heterosexual heterosexuality, obviously, in in nature, makes the most sense and is the most important because within you know the gay community. For those that you know raise, raising children, where do those kids come from? Some two heterosexual people, or at least two people, had to have heterosexual sex in order for you to adopt a child. Or if you're, you know, if it's like a lesbian couple and they're going to get a sperm donor, you still need a man. <laughs> you might not, you might not meet that man, right. but you, you know, you, you're going to know that man's male history. You're going to use that sperm, whatever, whatever. One of the one of the women in that lesbian relationship is going to get pregnant off of a man's seed. So no matter what, whether you're a, uh, a heterosexual uh, a black person or a homosexual black person, you still need some type of heterosexuality. You still need some type of, um, um, I guess, c c coming together of black men and black women, no matter what. So um, for me, I know a lot of times, you know, within the so-called conscious community, a lot of black men get called hotep, which hotep really just means peace, peace beyond uh, you or something to that effect. It basically just means peace. To be a positive thing, but a lot of people want to say that oh well, that's that's basically a new term for a black man that's that's a misogynist or is homophobic, which I don't know uh, too many people that are afraid of gay people, so I don't understand the homophobic part. Right. Uh, I guess it'd be more of uh, homosexual hate, and you know, I'm not saying that there isn't you know black people within the so-called black community that you know uh, will bully or you know harm gay people, and I, I'm completely against any black person harming any black person period in any shape or form um but to just automatically assume oh well, this is a black person with a beard talking about some woke shit he must hate black women and black gay people like no like you you are black first you're black first you know what i'm saying like if that's your sexuality fine but understand you still do need some type of you know black man uh black black woman you know synergy you still do need some type of you know heterosexual 
conception in order for you as a gay black man or a gay black woman to raise a child. So you still need us as heterosexual black people. And that's not me trying to say that we're better or trying to diss anybody, but just understand if all bad people were homosexual and not having heterosexual sex, what's going to happen to us? You got to, I mean, like, you've got to be real. Like, this is, that's just nature. Don't take that up with black men and saying that we're hating homosexuality. This is just the way nature is. You know, whether you want to argue that, oh, there's, there's, there's other animals that are gay, so why can't, you know, fine. But how are these kids getting here that you, that you want to raise? How, how does that happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody, got to be doing something so um i do agree that a um heterosexual uh a household black man a black woman and a you know household together is the the best ideal but it does come down to the mind i do i do agree with that but i was to say that on just just for me you know everybody can have their opinions but i, I do get sick of hearing that like oh well you're you're a hotel because you're a half sexual black man like what the fuck like what like i i don't know where that came from like i've had you know, biracial black women say they assumed I was a misogynist because of my hair. <laughs> Tell me that one. Yeah, like, oh, you like you a hotel. You like you don't like you're a misogynist because of your hair. I'm like, word. I'm like, okay, so my black features means that I'm sexist. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, like, what's going on with you <laughs> as a half black, you know, well, I still, you know, look at biracial people as black, but as a half black person. Where does that come from? It's like this, this whole this whole whole tap thing to me is ridiculous. I'm not saying that we can't check black men that are being you know sexist to our women or anything like that. That to me is some fuck shit. But this this we gotta stop this whole straight black men or the white supremacists or black people all like that. No, <laughs> stop. <laughs> but uh, that that's just where I feel. I mean, I don't know uh, where you are on that, but I, I agree overall that black man, black woman together raising a, a a healthy black child, black children is what we need more of. Right. Militant, not just raising them. You got to be sure to clarify because I was raised healthy. You know, a lot of black kids raised healthy, but I was still raised to be a coon. So it's all about not raising coons. That's very important. Uh, Pro-black militant minded children are necessary to be raised from two pro-black militant minded parents. That's what it takes. Hey, absolutely, man. Um, do you have any uh, closing words or thoughts or anything? I got a couple minutes here. Um, well, I, I'll just say that, I mean, show you some love. for. I appreciate you for not only being subscribed to my channel, I see you um, in my live streams, but even wanting to have me come do this on your channel. I'm actually going to see if I'll, um, if I could get somehow to post this to my channel. I'll figure it out how to do it. Um, yeah. Um, now, what, what you do uh get do you have a youtube downloader on your yeah, computer I got, I got that sorry right, you should once like once it uploads um you should be able just to copy and paste it on that app if i'm not mistaken and then you can just download it and do that like you have permission to do that okay um, well then should, if it doesn't work just let me know and we could figure out I'll work it out i'm, I'm pretty good with this I, i'm not i wasn't good with this i know i probably look like you know but I'm pretty good with the rest of it. My, I don't do the no, Google Hangouts is crazy. Like, I, like it took me a minute because I don't really respect many people to even be talking to them. But like I said, I see you in my channel. I see you on my channel. I see the stuff that you say, so I do respect that. And um, I respect your, you know, I respect your perspective and where you're coming from. Not many people that I respect over here. They, they really be on some bullshit. Um, so I'm just showing you my appreciation. I'm glad you had me on your show. I'm hungry to the motherfucker though. So I'm um. I'm about to get the hell out of here and go get me some food and shit, but I really do appreciate it. We'll chop it up. I mean, we we talk and stuff, so we'll chop it up. Mm. Um, but I appreciate you for having me, man. Hey, absolutely, man. Much respect to you, dog. So just keep keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, yeah, just absolute nothing but respect. Um, yeah, once again, sub to him. If if you guys need to, I think uh, Rashonda said she's already uh, sub to you. I made her a mod. Rashonda, uh, yeah, Rashonda, that's my hair. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cutting my locks off anytime soon. You ain't got to worry about that. And yeah, you see, I got the on too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, if you have anything else to say, um, no, I'm wrap it up. I don't. I love. Shout out, Team Rob. I hopefully your channel will grow. Um, most definitely, just keep working at it. I know it's gonna be hard. Don't be discouraged. These black folk out here. Um, that's want to be on that coon shit and 
I'm gonna want to argue with you. You're gonna get most of your arguments from other black people. Don't be. Oh, it's, it's already started to happen. Oh, uh, even the, the two three comments I be getting my videos. You somebody, man. I don't. I don't. What What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? We have a We have a conversation, but keep you saw up. what I was talking about. You watched. We we rewatched the video, man. Well, Just keep rolling. Tell you. <laughs> don't, don't let it discourage you. It will. Um, but don't let it stop you from keep keep moving forward, man. That's the only advice I have. And. And black family, we got to focus, man. We got to focus on getting these kids raised with a militant mindset. So people like me, people like a conscious coon killer here aren't having to try to save 30 year old black people who don't even want to be saved or convince them that they need to be saved first. So that's what we need to really be focused on. And that's my final thought, man. Hey, much respect, much respect. All right. As I always say, conscious coon killer, killer coon within me, coon within you. And we're out. Peace.